Welcome to the Madhouse, Batman! This is Lore Dump, the show where we take someone who hasn't played a game and walk them through the full story. Oh. Oh. Uh, you on your wow! My name is Monty Zander, I'll be the host today, and I'm joined by Chase. Batman, more like Bang Man. Oh, and Neil. Very good opening. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Tip top. We are finishing up our time with the Arkham series today. Uh, we're doing Batman Arkham Knight, the last game that Rocksteady ever made before they started making garbage live service games. So I can't wait this. to play the racing sim. Yes. Uh, yeah, well, so you're seeing on screen right now that we've got the Batmobile. Um, This is the first game where you get to drive around in the Batmobile. A lot of this game is the Batmobile. <laughs> I really like the Batmobile in this game. Yeah, me too. Yes. Does it have rocket launchers? Yes, yes. It does. Thank God. Yeah. yeah. Thank God. And machine guns. And I'll tell you right now, because we're not going to get into the mechanics of the Batmobile in this. because As long as it's so basically cool. a tank. Yeah. One of the, so the Batmobile is still technically non-lethal. <laughs> it, <laughs> it, it has a machine gun that fires rubber bullets. Um, it has a rocket launcher that you can't use on people standing around, but you can use them on cars. Um, of course. Technically non-lethal. That have people in them. And no, can... there's a lot of automated yes. turrets, like Drones. drone cars in yeah. this. They, and also, you can run people over in this, um, but the way that they get around it is when the Batmobile gets close to somebody, it shocks someone backwards out of the way of the car. So you're running someone over, but you're actually just like shocking them back out of the way. I, I, I'm not going to make any jokes about rubber bullets not being non-lethal, but uh, just coincidentally, I hope any of my listeners in Northern Ireland are doing okay. Uh, love you guys. This is darker, much darker than the others, to the point where there's going to be a content warning in the description of the video. I'm not stating oh. what the content warnings are, mainly because it will spoil stuff for you, Chase. Okay. And I know that you're okay with what we're going to cover, so we're, we're all right. Okay. Yeah, um, go, go and check out the description. Check the description if you're worried. Um, th th it will be there as to like what sort of stuff we'll be touching on. Paul Dini did not return to write this one. So it's not, it's still funny in parts, but it's not as generally camp and silly. This okay. takes itself very seriously, this final This one. is a Christopher Nolan one. Not necessarily, but it's definitely closer to Christopher Nolan's tone than any of the others. Um, so just just bear that in mind. It's We're still going to have a lot of fun with this. It is still quite goofy in places. Very goofy in some places. Um, but je the Joker's not here anymore, you know? So, you know, you're really dealing, hoping a lot of your other villains are going to carry the bag for this. Is this is this finally our, our power vacuum game? Yes, it is. Oh, thank God. Yes, it is. Love a good power vacuum story. So we're just going to jump into it. Um, Batman Arkham Knight was developed by Rocksteady and released in 2015. In universe, it takes place nine months after the events of Arkham City. So the Joker has been dead for nine months when this kicks off. So part one, off to Ace. Just to make sure that nobody is doubting what has happened. Amazing opening scene, this. We kick off with a little bit of Frank Sinatra. We hear him singing... I've got you under my skin. The camera pans through cocks and gears out of a machine until we finally see him. The Joker, dead, lying in a crematorium. We, the player, Push for nine months. months. Um, no, it's it's. This is, this is like before. right afterwards. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're about to do a nine month time time skip. We push the we push the button. The player pushes the button, and we set his body ablaze. And we watch gruesomely as it all burns so away. Just in case there was any doubt, any doubt in your mind, <laughs> the Joker is dead. Okay, so uh, yeah, Jim. Gordon. Can you put ashes in the Lazarus pit? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Jim Gordon's va uh, voice fades in and kind of gets us up to speed on what's happened. So he. he opens and this is the opening line of the game and it's Mike Herman Trout from Breaking Bad now voicing him and he goes this is how it happened this is how the Batman died nine months ago Joker was cremated I burnt the evil bastard myself and then we waited Gotham braced itself for the inevitable power struggle but crime actually fell deep down I knew crime was coming I was just waiting for someone to pull the trigger we don't begin by playing as Batman. We begin by playing as this guy, Officer Owens. It's Halloween. Okay. This game, just like all the others, takes place over one night. We're not doing Christmas Eve, we're doing Halloween. Eat your Halloween candy, Batman! <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it, it's, it adds to the spookiness. You know, Gotham's all done up in Halloween decorations. It's quite fun. Um, it's also one big kind of nod to one of the most famous Batman stories of all time, which is The Long Halloween, uh, which is 
arguably for some people, probably for me, it's the best Batman story ever written. Um, it's it's fantastic. Not everybody agrees to that, but there are enough people out there who would agree with me. Um, so yeah, so this is it. This is how the Batman died, and we're playing as Police Officer Owens. It's Halloween. He enters a diner and orders a cup of coffee and a nice slice of apple pie. We see people wearing Batman Halloween masks. Rose? Uh, yeah, it looks a little bit like Rose from Alan Wake. <laughs> um, just, just, what, what do you think about the art style? This is a PS3 game. It is. It P- PS4 game, sorry, PS4 game. It looks great. Um, It's giving Bioshock still. <laughs> it's still got a very this similar is, art style. This is <laughs> one of my, this is kind of art deco with a bit of 50s almost, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I, I think that it is still, it's nine years old this year. I think this is one of the best looking games I've ever played. I totally like agree. playing around the open world, the lighting, the 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 water, the just everything about it, the atmosphere is stunning. This looks better than some games you can buy. It. Oh, most games yeah, that comes great. out now. It's so good. I um, want that fridge. So what, what to really, it, this opening kind of really hammers home a couple of things. The first is that, yeah, people are wearing Batman Halloween masks. Everybody knows, they don't know who Batman is. They don't know the, you know, we don't know who Batman is. It could be anybody. It could be Jim Gordon for all we know. But, Batman is is a known entity in this in this Gotham now. He, people people celebrate. People are dressing up as him for Halloween. They know what he looks like. So it's it's almost the, one of the questions that this game kind of asks is like, what is Batman's legacy after all of, after ten years, eleven, twelve years of fighting crime? How much good has he done? And can he keep doing things the way he's doing them? Because the last time we saw him, he failed. Arkham City ended in failure. Hugo Strange died, failed to save the Joker. Ra's al Ghul dead, it, technically not dead, but I was, dead. I was, I was, Talia dead. Are we saying that it's a failure to not save the Joker? Yes. By whose standards? By Batman's standards. He has a code, he wants to save but, but, people. But, but does the city consider that a failure? No, the not. city does I was, not consider I that. I feel like by the city standard, Arkham City was a pretty good... Yeah. Well, a bunch of people yeah. got killed. You know, Batman almost arguably didn't save people in time, is the do argument. Think, do you think in this universe, this might be a niche reference to some people, they announced the death of the Joker uh, the same way as Bin Laden with John Cena at a wrestling show? <laughs> Batman has caught and compromised to a permanent end, the Joker! <laughs> it's also worth me noting that we pick up, it's, this isn't a direct plot point, but we pick up in the background a lot of this, that Gotham City believes that Batman killed the Joker. And a bunch of the criminals think this too. And people don't he, know what happened he, he in that room. Did. Well, no, no, no. He just wasn't able to save him in time. Joker, the Joker know. killed himself. He stabbed Batman. Batman went, ah, and dropped the cure. And Batman said, I was going to give you the cure. And Joker killed himself. Yeah. He pumped himself through of Titan. He stabbed Batman before he could save him. It's Joker's own fault that he died, but Batman blames himself for what happened. And the only thing that criminals saw was they knew they had he, they had a fight and he came out holding his body. I was yeah. saying that, you know... I'm pretty sure he needed the full antidote, not just half a dose. What I will say is don't worry about any of that <laughs> moving forwards. It's is, not... it, is it not explored? The rules of Titan will change. Batman, <laughs> Batman <laughs> saved his life with half the half the bottle of how? antidote. Yeah. So well, you God. don't know how much they need. What would be the chances that there would be exactly enough to save one exact person? That is exactly yeah. what Freeze told them. Yeah. Okay, well... That is exactly... I, I made one dose. Low Chase, power. it doesn't matter because the Joker's fucking deed. So who cares, uh. right? Um, so we people... We see people wearing Batman Halloween masks. Newspapers state that Bruce Wayne has donated 300... Batman's best friend has donated $300 million to something called the Arkham Redevelopment Project. This is a project that is rebuilding the destroyed landmass that was once Arkham City, <laughs> turning it into homes, shops, stuff like that. And again, I'm not going to get into it, but you pick up later that Lex Luthor... Has has been trying to effectively like buy that land off of Bruce Wayne. And Bruce oh. Wayne like, off, off, like. Yeah, Bruce Wayne is invested money to fi- fixing Arkham City and that is part of the open world where we're flying around Gotham. There's construction sites, you see all of that. A civilian approaches Owens while he's having his pie and he's like, hey, uh, sorry to bother you, bother you uh, Officer Owens, but there's a guy smoking over there. Would you say something? And Owens is like, yeah, wait here, I'll have a word. And off he goes. Unrelated, just the thing I'll put this out. Who's Henry Adams? Is he going to be important? Yes, Henry Adams will become important. Okay. Why are you saying Henry Adams? Uh, because there's a missing poster for him on the fridge. Yes, there is. Yes, uh, there's a couple of missing posters for Henry Adams on here. <laughs> and whilst I know this is the wrong comic continuity, it looks like a Stan Lee cameo. <laughs> it does look a little bit he like, looks a, like yeah. Like Stan Lee. Yeah. yeah, he's an older dude. Yeah, uh, we we'll get to Henry Adams. Really well pointed out. Yes. So, um, Officer Owens goes to speak to the guy smoking in the corner, um, and he taps him on the shoulder, and he says, Hey, uh, buddy, there's no smoking in here. And the man whirls around. 
His face is rotting away, no. teeth like fangs. The eyes are missing, just holes in his face. He grabs Owens, screams in his face, and throws him to the ground. Something goes wrong. It's not very nice of him. The whole diner explodes into violence and chaos. Insects scuttle around on the floor and the screen, and as Owens turns, dozens of zombie-like creatures approach. He shrieks, but we are playing all of this. Yeah. He shrieks, pulls out his gun, and immediately, if you're, if you're playing it like me, he immediately opens fire and guns them down before we cut to black. Huh. It's an amazing opening. It's an amazing opening. This comes very much up. Scarecrow up. question mark? Jonathan Crane, a.k.a. Scarecrow, crackles oh, into dude, life dude. on televisions across Gotham City, and he addresses the people. And his voice is different now. He's voiced by... He's not the Whispier. Thank God for my voice. He's Jonathan Noble, Denethor from Lord of the Rings. Oh! Voices Scarecrow in this. Man. And he's very down here. He's uh, very, very, you know... So thankfully, because I've lost my voice entirely. So, um... I am not really going to be able to do justice to just how deep and menacing this is because it's also like an, a warped filter over it a little bit. It's very cool. Um, but for the sake of this, Scarecrow's back. And he says, This demonstration used just five ounces of my toxin. Tomorrow this will seem like child's play. Gotham, this is your only warning. In less than an hour, the city eats itself. People beat each other up, tear each other apart in a desperate attempt to get onto buses leading an evacuation effort. In the, it's our excuse so there's no civvies while we're flying about. Shit, we need to get a metropolis here. Superman would have had this undercover in a second. <laughs> Pretty much. In the words of Jim Gordon, Yesterday, there were 6.3 million people in Gotham City. Today, not so many. The only people left on the streets are the sort who enjoy the chaos. Uh, so we see, you know, the the criminals, we see Two-Face, we see Penguin, we even see Harley Quinn just walking about, shooting cops, having a great time reveling in the chaos. And then we see Batman, watching over the anarchy of his city, contemplating his next move. The bat signal lights up the sky and he flies over to where Jim Gordon is waiting. Well, you still know how to make an entrance, he says, shutting off the bat signal. How's the evacuation going? Last bus got out of here an hour ago. I'm just glad my little girl was on it. Who is his little girl? Uh, Oracle. Oracle, Barbara Gordon, yeah. So he explains Barbie. that they don't know where Scarecrow is, but an unknown military vehicle was spotted speeding through Chinatown. It's the closest thing they have to a lead. He doesn't have enough manpower to spare on it. The police force is shredded. Effectively, the game opens with the bad guys winning. <laughs> like, there are like a hundred cops left in the city tops. <laughs> it's, it's total chaos. Do you really think Scarecrow's crazy enough to detonate a chemical weapon in Gotham? Jim asks. Yes. I won't let that happen. What kind of a question is that, Batman? No, it was Jim that asked that. Yeah, Jim's like, Ugh. Has Jim not been in this city for 30 years? <laughs> yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> but Batman is like, I'm not going to let that happen. And he flies off to Chinatown to see what he can learn. So in this game, we get to drive the Batmobiles we talked about. And a lot of the game returns to us using it to chase down bad guys, stuff like that. But... It's also basically a tank. Yes. So in the tie-in comic, here's a fun thing about this. So the Batmobile that Batman normally has, the classic one, he drove that into Bane in Arkham Asylum. <laughs> he hasn't had a new car since. He goes to Germany and gets some secret scientist in Germany to build him this tank mobile. You, I, I assume you've missed over, skipped over the, because it's not really story relevant, but the first moment you get the Batmobile is probably one of the more famous moments in this game. And it's really, really cool. Uh, there's a bunch of criminals. You're standing on top of a building and uh, someone in Batman's ear, probably Alfred, asks him, you know, sir, what are you doing? And you press the button to summon the Batmobile for the first time and Batman goes, evening the odds and like <laughs> and comes off the building and lands in the Batmobile so wherever so you cool. summon it it like skids around a corner wherever you are on the map and he like flips into the driver's seat no um, matter where you are how do you think he ordered this did he order it through Bruce Wayne Enterprises uh yes yes he did I wonder yes. why Bruce is ordering uh, a Batmobile it's, it's for my best friend Batman I promise well yeah. you're, you're gonna meet him soon but in this game Lucius Fox is here Morgan Freeman's character in the Nolan movies um, he's he's in the Arkhamverse and he starts to properly appear and he's like the head of the R and D facility at Wayne Tech but he oh, knows yeah, he knows that Bruce Wayne is Batman so he kind of does it all to cover it up and they just kind of like hide it amongst the funds and shit so yeah but he has his tank mobile now and the key thing that we, to note here is that we pick up through various collectibles and snippets of information that something has changed 
about Batman since the, since the Joker died. He has doubled down on bigger, more brutal tech. Fortresses have been constructed underneath Gotham, so he's never too far from his gadgets. We find them throughout. There's like garages and stuff just hidden underneath buildings and things. Half of the construction sites that are doing the Arkham redevelopment project have secret Batman vaults that he just kind of drives over to to get his new toy, his new thing. He's more brutal as well. His combat is more brutal. This feels like you're playing the Origins Batman. So, so it's really wor worth knowing. Alfred Jim Gordon, Robin Oracle, they have all noticed this change. Um, so firing a rocket into the military vehicle, he interrogates the driver who tells him exactly where in Chinatown Scarecrow is. A penthouse. And it's worth me noting that when he does this, um, I don't have it written down, but yeah. he, he grabs the guard and like slams him into the ground. And then he, he twists the guy's arm and is like, Scarecrow, where is he? And the guy's like, I'm not going to tell you. And he's like, where is he? And he goes, Chinatown. He's in, he's in a penthouse in Chinatown. And he's like, if you're lying, I'll break the other one. And the guy goes, the other one? <laughs> ah! And snaps his arm. And then later on, you can go, you can find this guy in the GCPD lockup and he's standing there with a sling and he's like, fuck you, Batman, Scarecrow's gonna kill you. Yeah. And you can walk up and grab the other hand and break the other arm. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's so mean. Yeah, it's pretty horrible. It's brutal. It's so good. Yeah, it's not, um, it's not good. <laughs> no, 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 this this guy is a mercenary. He's, he's put people in danger and Batman's break okay. both his arms. No, so, no. so we've got a penthouse to go to. We get to the penthouse um, and on his way, Batman calls up Barbara Gordon, a.k.a. Oracle. And he sends her a sample of Scarecrow's new toxin that he took off the driver, this, this guy whose army broke. He asks her to start running some tests, see if he can figure out where in Gotham it's being manufactured. She's like, I'm on a bus, Batman. Where do you expect me to do this? Well, Oracle is like, I'm on it. Is my dad okay? And Batman's like, he's, he's holding up. And she goes, somehow he always does. I feel bad for lying to him, Bruce. I th he thinks I left the city. And he goes, he'll understand. When we arrive at the penthouse, we see the Poison Ivy has been- Bear in mind, Jim Gordon does not know that she works for Batman. Does not know. I'm that. assuming she's probably in one of those bat caves. You will so find out where she is. She's probably pretty safe, wherever she is. When we arrive at the penthouse, we see that Poison Ivy has been captured by Scarecrow's militia. She's locked behind bulletproof glass. Scarecrow is on a screen behind her. Uh, sir, one of the guards says. It's- it's Batman, he's here. Well, this just got a little more interesting, Ivy muses. Were you expecting to find me, Batman? I'm afraid I must disappoint you. Take a look at the chamber. I want you to know the fear that is coming. Fear gas fills the chamber. The guard starts to cough. Ivy seems unbothered by it. It doesn't affect her. The guard starts firing his gun, trying to shoot whatever he's hallucinating. Um, he, and he stops for a second. And he looks through, we're in first person. He looks through the glass, looks at Batman, and his face just like, crumples in fear as he takes us in. Um, Ivy grabs the man, smashes his head to the glass, steps out of the chamber, and she goes, ah, oh, nothing like a little natural immunity, and she, like, stretches. Why does Scarecrow lock you up? Batman asks. No hello for me? Tell me, Batman growls, quicker to anger than we've seen him before. If you don't, I'll burn every plant in Gotham. <laughs> 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 Straight to it. In one hand, I've got a poppy. The other, I've got a big lighter. <laughs> and then Ivy explains. And she says, It all started with a meeting. Everyone was there. Penguin, Two-Face, Riddler, even poor Harley. Scarecrow said he had a plan. That together we could take you out and Gotham would be ours. Over my dead body. I believe that was the idea. I told him I wasn't interested in his pathetic human games. And when I came to, I was locked up in that room. So we learn through uh, challenge maps and DLC that Harley Quinn and Penguin, under orders from Scarecrow, actually broke Ivy out of jail to bring her to the meeting. It's, it's a fun little thing, just worth acknowledging. Um, and Harley always calls Ivy Red. Hey, Red, oh, you're over here, and all that sort of thing. So they're all kind of like working for Scarecrow. Scarecrow's united the villains under him. But Ivy clearly wasn't into it. Vines come out of nowhere, grab Batman, and throw him out of the window. Two seconds later, he reappears. Yeah. <laughs> like, she, she, she throws him out the, on the top floor, she gets to the elevator, the elevator goes down, and when it opens, Batman's standing there yeah. like... <laughs> I, turned, I turned my suit into a batarang. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and he's like, you're coming with me, and he throws her to the back of the Batmobile and takes her to the GCPD. She's like, nice ride you got here. Very spacious, very roomy. It's really silly. <laughs> so, so you, do you want to explain how they do how it? How they do it. Yeah. You've got, you, the, ba the back of the Batmobile Mobile opens and two sort of seats come out of it yeah. and he pops them into a seat and then they go and they get taken back and into, into the sort boot. of upside down into the boot. 
Um, it's so upside good. down. Yeah, they're kind of on their backs almost. And they're like bolted in so they can't move. Anytime you arrest someone and brings them back, <laughs> that's what happens. So yeah, um, the GCPD is a last refuge in Gotham. Every citizen and cop who stayed in the city is held out here. We see the medical teams treating people, stuff like that. Aaron Cash and Jim Gordon are here. Uh, Aaron Cash got like a promotion. He's now a receptionist. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Prison guard to receptionist. I think um, if I'd been if I'd been through. <laughs> what he's been through. I might want a desk job. Exactly. No, exactly. Valid, valid. Yeah. Um, so it's also where we drop off the various villains bats will come across um, in this cell behind. So your side missions. Um, for example, there's a Two-Face side mission. You pick him up after you arrest him and you bring him here. And whenever you come back, you'll see all the villains bickering with each other. Yeah, by the end of the game, it's like full of, of yeah. like criminals of various notoriety and they're all like shouting at you and you can interact with them. It's very good. The, the beautiful thing about this is the GCPD evolves the further into the story we get. So we see hostages we rescued, get treatment. There's lots of neat little details. And we can see Officer Owens, the guy we played as at the start of the game. Oh, really and we get to, get to slowly kind of trace him coming off the fear toxin and dealing with the fact he shot a bunch of people when he hallucinated and his reaction oh. changes if you don't shoot anyone at this when he hallucinates um his response is different uh, but most players will probably their first time through shoot people or at least that's what I did. Uh, we see that the cops all breathe a sigh of relief when they realize Batman's arrived. Um, he's actively working with the GCPD now. They're not trying to arrest him or anything. He, he comforts them. Uh, and Cash is like, well, look who it is when he sees Ivy. And Batman throws Ivy into an isolation chamber. No plants. She's secure. When he leaves the GCPD, Bats gets a call from another ally. Lucius Fox. He's at Wayne Tower, scrambling to put together some more gadgets and toys for us to play with. He sends in upgrades for the Batmobile, stuff like that. And he's like, good evening, Mr. Wayne. I'm just checking the car's performing to your high expectations. And Batman's like, actually, Lucius, she's feeling a little sluggish. Sometime later, Lucius sends in a new functionality, which is an afterburner. It's a nitro boost for the car. <laughs> it's, that happens quite a lot, that back and forth. Um, Thanks, Lucius. It was good of you to stay behind. You want to thank me? Don't ram the car off the road, he says. I would kind of like a way to connect my Audible subscription to the cars. I'm uh, I'm halfway through an absolute banger of a Jilly Cooper. <laughs> Do you think that he's he's made the car have a submarine mode this time? So if he wants to drive somebody into the bay... The car will survive. Uh, that would be cool, but no. <laughs> also, do you think he ever got the car off the bottom of the bay? I don't know, actually. We never learned that. Good question. Uh, Legitimately good question. Uh, That's something the comics could probably answer if they haven't. Know. Batman heads to the Belfry. It's Oracle's it's base of operations. This is this is from the comics. This yeah. is where she always is. She's in Oracle. a clock tower. Yeah. It's very cool. It's very cool. Um, so we're going to come back here a couple of times. Uh, he wants to check on her progress. And as he does, Scarecrow broadcasts himself across Gotham City. And he says... Remnants of Gotham, I have a message for you all. To the vandals who stayed behind to pick the still warm flesh from Gotham's bones, have your fun. You are under my protection. To the cowards quaking behind the police department's walls, you will not be spared. And to the Batman, I have already won. Emptied the city with just a vial of toxin. That's how little the protection you offered was worth. Soon... The legend of the Batman will be nothing but ashes. In the Belfry, we find Oracle and we pick up a couple of things. The first is that since the events of Arkham City, her and Tim Drake, mm -hmm. aka Robin, have started dating. Isn't that nice? Oh, Fun fact, currently in the comics continuity, Tim Drake is the only Robin, aside from Damian Wayne, who is a literal child, the uh, Batgirl Oracle that Barbara Gordon has not actually ever had a relationship with. Tim Drake, uh, bisexual. Oops, uh, bisexual. Okay. Um, the second... So that's the first thing we learn. The second thing we learn is that she still feels really bad for lying to her dad that she's out with the city. Like, she, this is eating away at her. And she's like, he'd kill me if he knew I was still in the city. He still blames himself for this. You've been lying to him for years at this point. I mean, Yeah, but like, this is like the night to end all nights. Yeah. This is bad. Um, and she gestures to her legs to the wheelchair. I feel like she should just tell him. Well, no, she, she hasn't. It's not um, maybe the ideal time to drop a bomb on his head. Yeah. Like... You know, maybe under tomorrow, a lot of maybe tomorrow time. morning. <laughs> so, so she's kind of like gushing to Batman, and she's like, like he still blames himself for this, and refers to the wheelchair and Joker's attack. But it doesn't matter. So she's like, I'm feel I'm full of guilt, Batman. I'm having a shit night of it. And Batman just goes, We'll stop, Scarecrow, when he leaves. So Robin then calls us, and he's like, Bruce, you need me out there. We can find Scarecrow faster together. Fun fact: Not Troy Baker voice of Robin this time. Troy Baker voices another character we're about to meet. Um, it's Matt Mercer instead. Odd, yeah. but okay. He's like, you need me out there, we can find Scarecrow faster together. If we work together, I'm Robin, you're Batman, let's do it. And Batman's, 
Bam is like, what you're working on is more important, Tim. I've got this under control. So what's what's he working on? And then Oracle calls. She's been why like even, eavesdropping. Why does he even bother having a sidekick? Oh, legit. Because he, yeah, he never uses him. Um, so yeah, and then Oracle calls in. And she's like, he just wants to help, you know. And Batman ignores her. <laughs> He's like, you two crazy kids and your dating life. Get out of yeah. here. I'm busy. This oh. is a good question to raise for this game, though, mm. Chase. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, maybe he should be relying on his team a little bit more. Um, the lesson that, uh, which I was convinced you were going to bring up, but I realized it might not have been the time. <laughs> Uh, it's the lesson that he learns at the end of Origin ten yes, years ago. And yeah. also City. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of. Well, City, to be fair, ends with him totally disillusioned. So I can kind of see, I see how it's fed in through City. But like he, this is the lesson he's forced to learn uh, at the at the end of his first game chronologically. After a long, long, long tutorial sequence where we play with some new gadgets, learn how the Batmobile works, Batman finally figures out where Scarecrow is manufacturing the toxin. Now. Do, do you want to take any guess? Where in Gotham would you manufacture chemicals? I don't think this has been a name that has come up much. I've, I mentioned it so once, far. so you might not remember it. But what sort of building do you think you would manufacture chemicals? A massive bunch of chemicals in. Church. God damn it. There's, there's, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think the joke is that Batman is struggling to find this place where there is a very famous location in Gotham called Ace Chemicals. It's oh. like a very... It's very famous. Yeah. Batman has been there numerous times. He knows this place. I'm not gonna, I, I did think that you were going for a, it's not. It's a place with no chemicals. No, no, no. Legitimately. So it takes Batman far too long to figure this out. So it's Go Gotham's biggest chemical plant. He figures out and goes, oh, he's at Ace Chemicals. <laughs> and Gordon calls him and he goes, <coughs> impossible. He can't be there. I've had a team there ever since the evacuation started just I like hope he finally that. snaps and goes, oh, because your guys have always been fucking golden, Jim. Well, exa that's exactly what he says. He goes, Crane must have bought them off, or is worse. This, is this fear toxin any different from his prior one? Yes, it's a new fear toxin. New okay. strain, new strand, more potent, more powerful. Really, this this is going to fuck everything up. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so Batman's like, well, Crane must have bought them off, or worse. So we head over and meet Jim's team outside the facility. But but again, I want to really, I just really want to really reinforce this. We're talking about two hours of gameplay where Batman is trying to figure out where this is. He doesn't even like swoop by to check. Like it would be faster for him just to go like, oh, I'm just gonna quickly pop into Ace Chemicals just in case. Never does it. So we go and uh, when we rendezvous with Jim Gordon outside the chemical plant, someone else is waiting for us. A military chopper looms overhead and blows a hole in the bridge, cutting us off from Ace Chemicals. Why? This is the character that Troy Baker is voicing. Um, so Troy Baker voicing new characters every game. So we hear a heavily augmented voice out coming out of the speaker system, and where he says, Time to die, old man. And I don't read into any voices I'm doing, okay? It's, it's a robot it's a voice. It's totally robot voice. Yeah, you cannot get anything from this. Time to die, old man. Oh, God, God really you made it, you made it shit. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes, time to die, old man. He locks on with his missiles and prepares to fire. When suddenly, Scarecrow appears on the screen by this mysterious new figure. And he says, in death, he has nothing left to fear. Keep him away from Ace Chemicals. Your vengeance will come. This character, not from the comics. Oh. Um, this is a brand new character created for this game. So players who have read the comics will go, I don't really know who this is with the ears and everything. What's going on? So, um, Is it Robo Batman? Well, the figure gives a really frustrated sigh and he goes, fine, but this ends tonight and flies the chopper away. And uh, Jim Gordon yells through the rain at Batman. He goes, is he a friend of yours? But it's clear Batman doesn't recognize him either. So we break into Ace Chemicals, rescue some hostages, yada, yada, yada. And Batman calls Oracle and he's like, whoever this guy is, he's assembled an army. I need a name. All right, Oracle says, we've got something here from a black ops team operating in Venezuela. They discovered a hidden training facility housing soldiers bearing the same insignia. There's nothing but speculation on the commander, though. The only thing sources can agree on is a name. Do you want to guess what the name might be? Man Bat. The Arkham Knight. Oh. The game is named after this guy. Oh. This is our core mystery. Weird. Who is the Arkham Knight? And why does he want to kill Batman? So Batman definitely does not recognize the name at all, but it seems there's some history here. He's out for revenge after all. Well, soon we come face to face with him and we learn a little bit more. While well, Batman is saving a maintenance worker in the plant, the Arkham Knight comes crashing through the roof and a heap of militia rush in, aiming their guns at Batman. All this militia, they all work for him. Keep your guns trained on him, the knight orders, chuckling at how easily he's trapped us. If he even looks like he's planning something, open fire. Oh, and avoid the bat symbol, it's a, it's a little trick. That's where his armor's the strongest. 
He points at various parts of Batman's suit and he goes, aim for the weak spots of the shoulders, then coordinate fire to where all of the plates meet. So he knows everything about us. He knows how to get us. He stretches out his arms and he goes, always defending the weak and helpless. That's what I like about you. You're predictable. That's why we're going to win. We know your move before you do. We know how you think. And uh, to quote Neil from our Red Dead episode, Arkham Knight is running at 100 all the time. <laughs> <laughs> he loves the sound of his own voice. All of his monologues are a little erratic, very heated and antagonistic. He's always bubbling with rage anytime we come across yeah. him. He is always pissed, never has a good day. So yeah, what's the deal with him? And Batman's like, do you know what I'm thinking right now? And he's almost amused by whoever this is. And Arkham Knight goes, of course, you're thinking, who the hell is this guy? And Batman goes, no, I'm just wondering which one of you I'm going to take out first. Just so we're both on the same page here, I fully, fully intend to kill you. But first, we're going to make you suffer. Batman activates a sensor in his palm and suddenly the Batmobile bursts and rolls into view behind the night. Uh, a gun pops out of his turret. Who needs Robin when you have the Batmobile? <laughs> Legit. So a gun pops out of his turret and just starts blasting at all of his men. Night grapples away, Batman beats up the goons and we head deeper into Ace Chemicals to find Scarecrow. Uh, Scarecrow has set the plant to blow. Not just a little bomb, a whole bunch of them. And if he succeeds, the blast radius won't just coat Gotham. The wind will pick up his toxin and carry it far, far further, coating half of the United States by morning. Oh. Batman enters the central chamber where Scarecrow is waiting for us, programming the detonation. I really like the the Arkham Knight Scarecrow design. It's not a million miles away from the, the original one in Asylum, yeah. but it's just a little bit darker there's a little few more syringes and yeah. uh yeah he's got a, he's got a hood well oh, i was about to say that it didn't look like he had the syringes on his fingies anymore no he does no he does he does oh, okay. um, just on one hand i was gonna save this till later but i will just tell you now because we learn it all through incidental dialogue the case with scarecrow in this game is that croc ravaged him in asylum he survived but croc mutilated him and he had to go away and get plastic surgery done and we pick up that through choice, he asked for the surgeon, just some underworld surgeon, to fuse his bag face with his skin. And we, you'll get some better shots of him later on, but it's almost like the, the, the sack is now part of his skin. It's Ooh, really gross. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really gross and messed up when you get to see him up close. It's very cool. But he is a shell of what he was physically, and he has spent years since Asylum planning this, this revenge. Tonight has been three years in the making, two years in the making. Scarecrow set the plant to blow, um, and he turns to Batman as he walks, and he's, ve he's very calm in every scene. I cannot get over how calm he is. And it always feels like he's in control, and he just goes, Do you really think you've won? Fear makes you predictable. I am in complete control. The flap of flesh over his mouth peels as he smiles. He lowers to his knees and puts his hand cam hands calmly behind his head. Batman picks him up and smashes his head into the console and is like, how do I shut it down? And Scarecrow just gasps and he goes, let me go or Barbara Gordon dies. Batman throws him to the side, immediately calls Barbara up and he goes, Barbara, get out of the belfry, now. Relax, she says, looking confused. Nobody even knows I'm hit. Signal goes dark, cut out, lost transmission. Batman turns back to Scarecrow, but he's already left the chamber, sealing the door behind him. Batman is stuck in here with a ticking time bomb. Maybe Robin could do- No, Robin's useless. <laughs> why would I ever send Ro Why would I ever tell Robin that his girlfriend's dying? <laughs> Robin, get to the belfry, maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah, Robin, can you go to the belfry and check in? Doesn't do that at all. So, Scarecrow kind of, like, looks through a little hole in the door, and he just goes, Nothing hurts like losing one's family, knowing that there is no one to blame but yourself. He leaves, and Batman desperately tries to find a way to shut down the bomb. Alfred rings him and tells us that he's been trying to reach Barbara but can't get an answer. Without a word, Batman starts preparing a neutralizing agent for the toxin. Master Bruce, what are you doing? It's too late. You can't stop it. I know. I'm not trying to stop it. But I can reduce the blast radius. Uh, what about you? That doesn't matter. So the plan is effectively just just this room, effectively. It's, he's gonna sacrifice himself. 
the gas will overtake him, but at least he will be able to protect Gotham and the, the, it won't blow up so much that the wind will catch it. So as the bomb counts down, fear talks and leaks into the chamber. The timer counts down suddenly and it sounds, it sounds wispy and ethereal and nightmarish. And it's, it's, you know, it's like it counts from 60 or something and you are trying your best to try and move Batman into place. And it, it starts to laugh as it counts. The world starts to melt and bleed. And this is it. This is how the Batman dies. Three, two... One, and just before the bomb goes off, Batman turns and sees the Joker holding a gun. Miss me, he cackles and pulls the trigger. Part two, hmm. hunting for Barbara. Three months earlier. Jim Gordon enters the Panessa Movie Studios. It's been shut down and derelict for almost a year now. Down the elevator he goes and into the main foyer. There, he sees a humongous machine, five cells surrounded. Cell one has this woman, business executive Christina Bell. Miss me already, Bats? She laughs. Her skin is white, her hair is green. And then when she sees Gordon, she goes, Oh, it's you, Commissioner Boredom. What have you done with my soul, mate? Cell two has this man. Late night entertainer Johnny Charisma. Oh, 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 don't tell me, he says. You are the police commissioner. Your face was on that billboard they replaced with mine. <laughs> Is it just me or does it look, kind of look like he's wearing Joker cosplay? Well, they're all... They all have green all hair Joker. and white peeling skin. Oh, did the one prior have green hair? Yeah. Oh, so she did. I thought lighting that looked brown. Yeah. Whereas this one, I could see like the lipstick and he looks like the Joker from Gotham. Uh, yeah, yeah, he does, he does, yeah, he does, he does. So, so Johnny Charisma is like, what are you waiting for, old timer? Johnny C doesn't do requests. Cell 3 has this man, the wrestler Albert King, also known as Goliath. What do you want, pig? Come in here, eyeballing me. You think you can police me? Nobody polices the Goliath. And Cell 4. Apart from Batman, evidently. Apart from Batman, <laughs> evidently, yeah. And Cell, and cell 4 has a school teacher called Henry Adams. The man. Oh, yeah. there he is. Henry Adams is a school teacher. Henry is the only one of the four whose hair isn't green and whose skin isn't white. He looks normal. Commissioner, he says, thank God, you have to get me out of here. They've locked me up running tests like I'm some kind of guinea pig. There's nothing wrong with me. And then like a jump scare, Batman appears. <laughs> and it's Jim turns and he's like, boom, yeah. like that right in your face. Yeah. I'm glad you came, Jim. You need to see this. What is this place? Who are these people? Before it killed him, Joker sent out his infected blood to all of the hospitals in the state. Robin was good for something. I know, Jim says. We tracked it all down. No, we missed some. Hospital errors, transfusions that went unrecorded, five people were affected and untreated. And now they're becoming... Joker, Gordon gasps. But what about that one? And he points to Henry Adams. He's been infected the longest, but he's symptomless, immune to Joker's blood. I've got Robin running tests to find out why. I've cooperated, Henry shouts from his cell. I did everything you asked. You said it would only take a few days. You can't hold him here against his will, Gordon says. Yeah, this is pretty, just, just a little school teacher. This is pretty, pretty dark. Disturbing. Yeah. Um, we're close, Jim. We can't let him go until we've saved the others. You said five. I'm only counting four. There's one missing. Batman looks into the empty cell and says, he'll be here soon. It's him. It's him. So what do you think about this, Chase? I mean, first off, what do you think of this machine? <laughs> like, this whole setup here does not feel very... It does not feel very superhero. No, it doesn't. It? No, it no, doesn't. no, I'd say it does. What? Because what is your definition of superhero? Yeah. No, Locking I innocent think... people away. <laughs> okay, yes, but they're innocent, but they're also corrupted. Like, this does feel like, hey... You're going to die. I'm doing this for you. Are they going to die? Geez, he didn't say they're going to die. He said they're turning into the Joker. That's not better. There's no, not even not a dying. telly in these cells. It's like a horrible thin... Lo this looks like the bed that Neil it's slept on it, here last night. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was also very inhumane for me. But this is like... In these are not even belts. these even not e not even normal prison cell sizes. No, they're not. This this you're on like a camp bed with nothing around you. It's very dark. I suppose you're supposed to look at this and go like look, feel like the same way uh -oh. Jim does, which is like uh, Batman. Uh oh, it's another sign of like Batman might have gone a little bit off the deep end since the Joker died. Like you're not supposed to be like he's the baddie or anything, but just you're supposed to be a little concerned by this. Um, what do you think about this as well? Joker's blood turns people into the Joker. I think it's dumb. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> I mean, fine. Like, rather, rather, rather. I don't think that it inherently is dumb. I just think that it's very out of nowhere given everything we knew about <clears throat> Titan mm -hmm. and the Joker up to this point. I love this game and I really, really enjoy this story and I will defend a lot of as aspects of this story. I fucking hate this. I um, quite like it. You quite like it? I Fair like enough. It. I'm See, glad that we've got some discussions like of opinion If here. it was anything but Titan, mm -hmm. then I would like it because I feel like blood turning people into things, that's very standard. That's not out of left field. It's just that they've already set up rules for this one thing, and they had to use the one thing again. Yeah, you're totally right. Yeah, but in my brain, when I think about that, there's another part that just goes, ah, shush. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but that's for me. Back to present day. Batman awakens to a collapsing Ace Chemicals. Is this going to be how we keep the Joker in this fucking game? Is that he's just going to keep appearing in his head as Batman descends into madness? And he's a, g and a giggling <laughs> Joker. Oh. <laughs> they can't get rid of him. How do you feel about this? This is better than the last bit. This is okay, because I was pissed off that we never dealt with the fact that uh, he didn't cure everything. So the Joker's still being in his head. That I like. That's good. I love this too. Yeah, that's good. Um, you're going to love this more. It's very, very clever. The Joker is now with us all the way through to the end of the game. Good. He will pop up a lot. Um, also want to point out, this was, really this was not in the marketing, and no reviews were allowed to show clips of this, talk about it, anything. The, all the marketing was about the Batmobile and, like, Batman fighting, I don't know, Firefly or some shit. This was a massive secret. In fact, one of the, mar the marketing manager gave a great interview with them, I think it was MinMax, where they were like, inside Rocksteady, like, they had to sign NDAs on it. Mark Hamill had to be, like, smuggled into the recording studio and stuff. Um, and Mark Hamill accidentally gave away in an interview. He was, like, um, they were, like, he was, he was doing something for an animated yeah, movie or something. This, yeah. And he was, like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, I love playing the Joker. I, I love playing him, you know, in, in the TV show. I love him in the movies. Uh, I, I really, really enjoy playing him in anything. Oh, just wait till you see the new game. And but Arkham Knight was, like, a couple of months away. And people were, like... Is Joker in the fucking Arkham Knight game? He's dead! But yeah, so here you go. Joker back. This is how they bring him back. So, um, so Joker straight up is just like, Bruce, can you hear me, Bruce? Oh, don't act surprised. You knew this was going to happen sooner or later. Me, stuck deep inside you. Yeah! <laughs> Yes. Together, we're going to give this city what it deserves. Full penetration. <laughs> <laughs> a new Batman, a better Batman, a dark, more murdery Batman. But for now, it's you and me, the new dynamic duo. There is a comic thread where it, it, I'm forgetting. Is it Batman becomes the Joker or is it Joker becomes the Batman? Both have happened. Both have happened. The, yeah. Which is the more famous? Because there's one that I know. It'll be the Batman who laughs. The Joker that's Batman. The one, that's yeah, the one, yeah, yeah. That's a that's from a Joker. That's that Batman from a Nightmare Dimension. Uh, don't worry about it. But oh, okay. yeah, um, some people really fucking hate that storyline. I think it's fine. I think it's fun. Uh, they, they keep coming back to it too much DC. They've they've overdone it a few. Like, times. Like within but... two years, it was like twice the the main uh, <laughs> the big story. Big was bad. In. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yes, he's like, the new dynamic duo. Oh, you're brooding for two now. So yes, I'm back. <laughs> and no, you can't kill me again. I'm playing for keeps this time. So after taking a face full of Scarecrow's new fear toxin, Batman is hallucinating the Joker. He is now with us for the entire game. Nobody else can see him, duh. And Batman will A, never ever speak to the Joker, almost in a desperate attempt not to acknowledge his existence. And B, never tell another person that this manifestation of the Joker is floating around, uh ever. Are we to assume that this is the fear toxin or the Joker blood or the fear toxin has accelerated the Joker blood or what? Fear toxin has accelerated the Joker blood is the in-universe explanation. So it's important for me to note, and I think you, it, you, you'll you get a lot out of this reading it this way. This is presumably his biggest fear is that he's only got a limited time left before turning into a Joker. Yes. So it makes sense. What's the most dangerous thing that, go that could come to Gotham today? Batman and Joker combined. And that's what's potentially going to happen. That's what he's worried about. But also anytime the Joker speaks, it's not technically the Joker, it's Batman's internal monologue b being manifest as the Joker. Now, I do have one plot hole in this, that Batman has now developed two cures for this. Yes. So the science explanation for this is later on, but I will tell you now. The science explanation is effectively it's Crutzfeld, Crutzfeld Jakob disease. Joker had it in his blood. The Joker blood has effectively overtaken the Titan stuff, and it's now just turned into this new chemical. And Batman doesn't have a cure for this new chemical, and he doesn't. He doesn't. He, that's what he's trying to figure out. How do we fix this? Henry mm -hmm. Adams has what Batman has and has no symptoms. It seems to have the something in his DNA that means it's not. So Batman and Robin right now are trying to figure out like, okay, can we can we get something out of 
of you that can cure me and these other people. That's the hope. So that's what Batman Robin's been working on this whole time in the background. So it's not just in the story beats the Joker will appear. He will appear in the open world. And yeah. best of all, Gotham will change. So Gotham City evolves with him. So statues that previously looked normal will now flip to look like the Joker. <laughs> Sometimes when we're fighting thugs in the street, Joker will appear alongside them and try to get a lick in. Uh, billboards and signs will change, for example. So we've got this one. You never forget your first. Department, Lacey's department store and it's a man and he's putting a pearl pearl necklace on a lady um, and oh then... then it's going to be Joker putting a pearl necklace on the oh, Batman no, <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn it. I wondered if I could get through the phrase <laughs> fucking pearl necklace without you setting it up <laughs> well no this is what it changes to um, Chase describe this oh <laughs> It's Batman garroting the the Joker. Yeah, yeah, it's real great. And it is, it's really good. You'll just be on a rooftop brooding, you know, yeah. planning your next mission, and the Joker will just sort of sit next to you out of nowhere and go, hey, Bats! It's it's like, it really dynamic. <laughs> it's great. I don't have it written in, but there's a great bit later where you're, you're on top of a building. And this is not a story beat. This just happened to me when I was playing. Some people won't get these beats. Some people will get other beats, where Joker will just kind of be like... Ah, oh, so Scarecrow's the new bad guy in town? And he's like, ah, oh, God, Gotham's really gone to hell since I died. And it's, <laughs> it's all that stuff. It's very good. Um, I will also say that he makes appearances in some of the side mission stuff. And I will point some of that out when they come up, because they're quite fun. Um, so, yeah. So Batman escapes these chemicals and he calls Alfred to explain. Uh, and he, he managed to reduce the blast radius. He saved the city. And Alfred is like, well, how are you feeling? And he's like, I had a bad reaction, but it's over now. And then suddenly Joker cuts him. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I've really got to hand it to Scarecrow. I've never been a fan of his concoctions up until now, but this batch... <sighs> Mm, it's intoxicating. It's it really brings... <laughs> he's like, it really brings out the me in you. Batman ignores him. He's got to find Barbara. She's probably in danger or worse. So he drives back to the GCPD to pick up Jim Gordon. He deserves to know that his daughter has been taken. Is he going to explain how? But as we're heading over, Joker, like, kind of pops up in the Batmobile. Like, his head pops up and he goes, I can't wait to see the look in his face when you tell him his daughter's been kidnapped. Uh, it's all your fault. And uh, Jim naturally crumples when he oh, learns gosh. what's happened yeah. to his daughter. No, she she got out. She she told me hours ago. Stay calm. We'll get her back. Which one? Jim growls. Who's got my little girl? They head to the clock tower. Jim takes the elevator, but Batman rushes on ahead, entering from the roof. And when he arrives, Barbara's here. Oh. But the clock tower has changed. It doesn't look like the high-tech fortress it was earlier. It looks like someone's living room. It's a vision brought on by the toxin. Barbara is reading a book, and the doorbell goes. And anybody who's read a Batman comic knows exactly what we're about to witness. Just a minute, she says, and she opens the door. Joker stands there holding a revolver. Candy Graham, he says. Barbara gasps, turns to run, but Joker's too fast. Bang! Barbara hits the floor. He's paralyzed her. She can't move. Oh. She lies there and she starts to whimper. Joker approaches, she's whimpering and she's, she's panicking and she doesn't know what to do. She, all the sensation is leaving her body. And he goes, oh, don't pass out yet. Come on. And he pulls a camera out. Show a little spine. Click, click, click. And he starts taking pictures of her. Just wait till your father gets home. Oh, he's going to be furious about all this mess. And then he leaves. And Bar we are left alone in the room with Barbara gasping and wincing and bleeding out. Words start to scratch themselves out on the wall. This is what happens when you drag your friends into this crazy little game of ours, it says. So you know this story, Chase. Killing joke? I know it to a degree, yeah. So just for full kind of context here... Um, is this entire game meant to be the killing joke? No, no, no. no. Killing oh, Joke has already okay. happened. This is a flashback to the moment when this happened. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, It's kind of just, you know, some players might not know the Killing Joke, so it's just so you can see it. And it's also mainly because some players, like myself, are like, oh, sick, Joker's back, yay! Because Joker will pop up and he'll be like, you'll get him, Bats! And you're like, yeah, Joker, you and me! But this is to really reinforce, like, it's not a good thing what is happening. The Joker is terrifying. Look what he did in his prime. Um, we should be scared of him. Um, and this is reinforcing it. So in 1988, DC Comics decided to take Batman in a very dark direction. Two stories released. One was called Death in the Family, a story where Joker murdered the then Robin, Jason Todd. He beat him to death, with a, beat him with a crowbar and then blew him up in a warehouse. The other was called 
The Killing Joke, which is this story that we've just witnessed. Neil, do you want to kind of just give a, a rundown? I know we've yeah, mentioned there, it of just are, like what this story darker, is. There are darker beats to The Killing Joke that I don't particularly feel like we need to go into because yeah, I don't fair. think they're relevant to this. But essentially, The Killing Joke is uh, a lot of people's favourite. You know, I, I think nowadays it's probably been recontextualised a little bit and then people think it's got a really good, strong ending. Well, it's got a great ending, but yeah. basically it's the Joker's one bad day storyline. It's his contention that anyone can become him with a bad enough day. Um, he shoots Barbara Gordon, paralyzing her. He kidnaps Jim Gordon. Uh, Jim Gordon is basically put through this uh, uh, fun house, mad house in a, in a fair where he's shown pictures of Barbara uh, in an attempt to sort of drive him mad. Batman saves the day, but they have their, their sort of final confrontation, uh, Batman and Joker. Um, the Joker finally makes Batman laugh. And the, yeah. the, 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 yeah. it's left ambiguous at the end. But a lot of people, including a lot of very famous comic artists and writers, their contention is Batman kills the Joker in the last frame. Yeah. Um, but it's 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 deliberately left amb- kind of ambiguous. But it would be my reading as well yeah. of that comic is that Batman kills the Joker. He snaps. It has probably the Joker's most famous, one of his best written monologues, the, the One Bad Day monologue, yes. which is also where I believe where we get the, the, the multiple backstories. Yes. Um, you know, it, it, yeah. And, and yeah, if got, I was going to have an origin story, I would prefer it to be multiple choice. And, yeah, and it's the killing joke because he finally makes Batman laugh at the end with quite a good joke. So I'm just kind of flagging that to you because we are entering into the end game here. That these two events, these two horrific events have happened. Batman has failed quite a lot in his career. Barbara, Jason, um, again, like J- Jason... The, the Jason stuff kind of feeds into the killing joke in, in, in comics continuity. All that has happened. Now we fail to save Joker. Tally is dead. The Hugh was strange situation happened. He's had a shit couple of years, a few years of it. Um, so this has all happened. Now, one of the things I love most, because I love Barbara Gordon, and she's one of my favourite DC heroes, so I just want to say it now, is the point of this is that afterwards there was a fantastic little run of, of comics with Barbara Gordon, where she joins the Birds of Prey, and the whole thing is that everybody tells her, you should not be getting involved with this anymore, including Batman. Batman is like, you should take a step back from crime fighting. You, you can't walk. And Barbara goes... Aren't you? I'm Oracle now, and nothing is going to stop me. And I love that about her. There is a DLC chapter that I'm not going into because it's very short and it's inconsequential, where you get to play as Barbara Gordon during her Batgirl years. Ah. And basically, all you learn about that is it's her and Tim Drake Robin going up against Joker and Harley Quinn. Uh, They take Gordon hostage. They stop him. Hooray. Um, It's good, silly fun. The only through line there is that Barbara is a very serious person. She takes more out. She's more like Batman than the Robins are, to be honest, in her characterization. She's very serious. The entire time, Tim is dry, trying to get ask her out for a drink. <laughs> he keeps t- t- kind of trying to start that conversation and either Barbara doesn't realise he's hitting on her or does and is trying to shut it down. Yeah. Which kind of, it brings it full circle to nowadays the two of them are dating when she's Oracle. I think and now t- she's typically busy. there's an impression that um, uh, the the Robins tend to reflect different parts of Batman's personality yes. um, or his skill set. So Nightwing is sort of in some runs get in the comments get mad um is sort of the second greatest and has even beaten batman in combat he's the sort of master martial artist um obviously jason todd's dead but tim drake is a great detective he's yes. all about the detective work tim drake is the second the world's second greatest detective <laughs> that's how people call him yeah um all of these events are canon in the arkham universe barbara paralyzed jace Jason killed both by the Joker. The Joker fucking sucks, you know, so bad times. Barbara's... Great. Uh, oh, fun thing about this. When you're in the room uh, and Barbara's lying there, like, whimpering and bleeding out, the game, you can be in that room for as long as possible. The game counts your button presses. You're only able to leave that room when you start to panic. And you start going, I don't know how to get out of here. The doors are locked and I'm just stuck here with Barbara oh. dying. And this is not a nice feeling. Can I get out of here? And then after, like, I don't know, 100 presses or something is coded in, that the wall melts away and the, the room opens that's up. That's really cool. It's very cool. Yeah, so you can be in there for two hours, three hours, four hours if you don't press a button. So very, very cool. So anyway, it melts away and the clock tower returns and Jim Gordon arrives. He picks up a photograph Barbara kept of him and his daughter. He thinks that Scarecrow took her just to get to him, just like Joker did all those years ago. Batman, Batman, you're going to divert this operation if you don't just fucking tell him. It's all my fault, he says. (laughs) A beat, and then Batman says, Jim, there's something I need to show you. He activates a retinal scanner and the belfry transforms. Screens, keyboards, tech, all comes out of the walls and flooring. Jim can't believe what he's looking at. I love this shot with a wheelchair yeah. next to him. It's so, th- this is a beautifully shot game. Some of these cutscenes are stunning. So he can't believe what he's looking at. And Batman just walks next to him and kind of puts a hand on his shoulder and he says, She's strong, Jim. 
stronger than you realize. She works for you? And he looks at Batman, and his voice starts to crack, and he goes, This is all your fault. And Batman says, I will find him. And without hesitating, Jim Gordon swings hard and punches Batman in the face. Good. She's my family, my daughter, she's all I've got. I never should have trusted you, never. You stay away from me. I'll do this on my own. And he leaves. Yep. And that's it. I mean, fair. That relationship is dead. <laughs> Batman steals himself and starts to investigate the clock tower. He reviews CCTV footage, sees that the Arkham Knight was the one who took Barbara. Following his trail, he calls Alfred and asks him to start investigating the knight. He's like, I want his name. As do I, sir, Alfred says. I'm assuming he chose that title for a reason. Where do we start? Arkham City. Go through the files of every inmate who was released following the death of Hugo Strange. In the time it's taken for us to find Barbara's trail, the entirety of Gotham has Look been taken it. over. This, oh, like, like this does not do it justice of how good it looks. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, yes, so the entire city's been taken over by the Arkham Knight and Scarecrow's militia. Tanks roll the streets, military checkpoints have been set up, it's a police state. It's stuff for us to, you know, check checklist stuff. Joker babbles, we beat up some goons, and Robin calls him. He asks where Barbara is, he can't reach her, and Batman fucking lies. He tells Robin that she's fine, she's working on something important. Oh. Yeah, and then Joker is like, how very me of you, little bird and little barber star-crossed, Batsy, like me and you. Shame they're being torn apart now, thanks to your crusade. Why don't you just... <laughs> Because now fucking Robin's gonna hear it from, I don't know, Commissioner Gordon or some shit. Well, he got, so Joker continues and goes, You know, this Robin seems a real improvement on that last one. Remember, <laughs> remember Jason Todd? <laughs> what a whiner. We're both better off without that loser. True. So, no, well, you haven't met, met Jason Todd. Uh, so, into, okay. into the tunnels below Gotham we go, and as we're skulking through the Arkham Knight attacks, he knows we're here, he's been tracking us this whole time. That's some useless camo. Where are you going to get use out of red and black camo? Uh, in a city donned in red lighting by his <laughs> red tanks and shit. <laughs> I think it's actually pretty spot on camo for the, for Gotham. It makes sense. Arkham Knight's design is really cool. Yeah, I love like it. I love it. Like like and the helmet has like uh, lights moving over it, like mm -hmm. little scanny things, and you know it's not sort of static. It's, it's got the little ears and stuff it, to emulate. Is he meant to kind of look like Batman? Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. He is military. He's the, Batman. He's the knight. Yeah. He's okay. the he's the he's the knight with a K. Yeah. 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 It's very good. Night yeah. with a K. So he pops in, he knocks Batman to the floor, stuns him, and pins him down. And he goes, You're, You're not going, going anywhere, anywhere, old man. man. And then he cocks his head and goes, Huh. Try weave titanium coated armor. Nice. Unless you know exactly where to shoot. He fires once into a weak point of the armor. It doesn't penetrate, but it hurts. Okay. So he, he starts to leave and he goes, You're good, Dark Knight. Even better than I remember. It's going to make it even more satisfying when I kill you. Oh, and, uh, don't worry about Barbara. I'll take better care of her than you ever did. And he leaves. Batman beats the crap out of a bunch of his men, but leaves one conscious to interrogate. And he does that. <laughs> I know exactly what's coming. <laughs> By very, very slowly driving the Batmobile over his head. What? <laughs> yeah, he's got a remote control for the Batmobile. He, like, parks it so that the wheel's sitting against the guy's head and starts revving it, and it's like, like, pressing more. You get head. to control this? Jesus <laughs> Christ. So, uh, yeah, he's like... Also, oh, it, sorry. sorry, it's coded so that it doesn't... The, the, it doesn't trigger mm. the confession until you like press it down long enough so that it's like actually rolling over him but you can just hold it there forever yeah. so you can find videos of it just <laughs> sort of sitting against his head this guy's worst night ever um, I would love to see this on PS5 with a new like tension controller mm -hmm. like trigger so um, he, ba Batman's interrogating him and he goes where's Barbara Gordon where did the knight take her and the militia man's like I don't know but, but please stop it! But, but but I do know that the knight's working with Penguin. Uh, maybe maybe Penguin knows. So luckily, finding Penguin is both main mission stuff and spins into a side quest. Batman so breaks his arm and leaves. <laughs> yeah, <pretty much. laughs> um, so and then breaks his second arm in the side. Yeah, quest. it comes back, reverses back. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, so so it's a main mission and a side quest, so we're going to go find Cobblepot and see what he has to say. So, it turns out that Dick Grayson, the first Robin, has been looking into Penguin. Oh good that he he learned the most important thing never protect your mouth <laughs> this is a garbage mask for, for normally nightwing has like the the robin style mask and he looks yeah. awesome in it i don't know why they did it this way i mean given how batman treats his robins i understand why he wanted to break away yeah i mean 
I don't like that this is a kind of perception and it's not an unfair perception because in a lot of comics he can be written as yeah it's a ridiculously irresponsible thing to do to have like child soldiers but he is written as a very caring father in yes, in is. a lot of yeah. kind of comics um yeah so he doesn't protect Gotham Nightwing, he protects the nearby city of Bloodhaven. That's where he has his base of operations. Because he, does, he doesn't want to be operating in the same city as Batman, he wants his own place. Edgiest name. Oh yeah, It's yeah, Blood yeah. with a U as well. It is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is, yeah. What do you mean? Actually, it sounds really safe. This place, your blood's getting spilled everywhere. This is a haven for your blood. It's going to stay all inside you. <laughs> So uh, he, he does like a little flip onto the rooftops and he's yeah. like, still lurking around on rooftops. And he grins, trying to keep things light tonight. Uh, and Batman's like, you shouldn't be here, not tonight. And he's like, are you kidding me? When I heard about Barb, by Penguin, Batman cuts in straight to the point. What do you know? Dick explains the Penguin's been shipping weapons all over the city for months, classic Penguin, and now as preparation for Scarecrow's attack. He's got a couple of leads on where he is, so we work together to find the Penguin. Uh, it isn't hard. He's locked up in a warehouse, chatting away to his men, counting his money, having a great time. Batman leaps out of a vent, grabs him by the throat, and cracks his skull on the concrete. And he's like, the Arkham Knight, Barbara Gordon, tell me where they are. One of Megan's Penguin's men runs forwards... And Batman punches him in the balls. <laughs> Finally! Uh, Penguin's like, ah, you know, on the floor. And he's like, they were going to see some geezer called Simon Stagg. I think he runs a pharmaceutical company or something. The airship's hanging over the West River. They belong to him. So there's two massive... Was it, was, it, was it seeing that Batman now punches balls that convinced <laughs> Penguin to go, well, no, that's a step too far for me. Yeah. You're really not Game's, o- Game's over. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Punch me on the face all you want. I don't wear a cup like you do. Um, yeah, I'm very like, soft. There's a lot of metal on your fists. <laughs> I want to point out that the angle of this as well, it's not even like Batman just kind of goes like, Ugh, while he's holding Penguin down. He like, his full, full body, body is yeah. into that punch. <laughs> that guy does not have any balls. So Joker is laughing as as um, Penguin says, like Simon Stagg, he's working with Scarecrow and they're probably on the blimps. And Joker's like, huh, can you believe that accent? Betty only puts it on to sound scary. And Penguin's men all rush in and ambush us. Yeah, yeah. And so Penguin's men all come in, Penguin gets away, but thankfully Nightwing leaps in to save the day. Playing as both Batman and Nightwing, we pow bang whack through the goons. So this is a thing you can do in this game. With one button press, you can swap to your AI companion, who this entire time is putting up a really good fight and actually taking down people. And immediately it'll be like a transition animation that takes three seconds, and then you're playing as, as Batman's helper. This happens a few times. Robin, Nightwing, and a couple of other characters um and also you get these kind of dual takedowns where you can press a button and you'll both do an awesome flippy takedown together very cool when all of a sudden dawn of the dust settles penguin's gotten away and nightwing's like bruce you need to let me help and bat was like i had it under control in the side quest so you continue this tracking down of penguin after he gets away in the side quest the two of you find some more warehouses kick some more ass blow up penguin stuff and eventually penguin manages to capture nightwing You've been taking for me all night, Batman. So I figured it's time to do some taking on my own. And he puts a gun to Dick's head. And Dick goes, hey, 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 Oz, do you remember the Flying Graysons? Who were his, his parents who died. Uh, and D- Penguin's like, what? The Flying who? Shut up, you fairy. Homophobic. Yeah, Pe- homophobic. Penguin confirmed homophobic. <laughs> so, so, and then Dick goes on and he goes, when they performed together, there was magic in the air. There was one move they did that just... Took your breath away. Batman gets the message. Nightwing flips Penguin over, kicks him in the back. Penguin flies through the air, and Batman comes down with a hard stamp. It is all over, and Penguin is finished. See, Batman, tag teams work! Mm -hmm. There is a continuation of this scene that happens here, that for the sake of the structure of this story, people are going to be like, why are you talking about this bit that happens? That's really cool. I'm actually going to put that in later on. You'll see why when we get to it. I'm just saying that now, commenters, uh, that it's coming. Part three. Stag. The next stop is the Stag airship. Maybe Scarecrow's here, maybe Barbara's here, who knows. Uh, it's a tenuous link, but right now it's the only lead to the Batman we, Do we know what Stag is yet? Uh, no, you're about okay, to find cool. out. Just in case. But, but this is Penguin's lead. Yeah. He was like, uh, Stag's been working with Scarecrow, I think. Go, go, go it, speak to him. It's a bachelor, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's a bachelor pad. Yeah. yeah. Stag's airship is a set of labs. It turns out that Simon Stag has been working with Scarecrow. He gave him his tools and resources and let him experiment on his fear toxin, creating something more potent. He did all of this quite simply 
to make some money. He thought he could yeah. sell it as a biological weapon. Standard. <laughs> yeah. Um, fun fact, so in the Arkham Knight Time comics, there's a whole thing where uh, Bruce Wayne is trying to, you know, get the Arkham Redevelopment Fund going. As part of this, he's like, I'm investing 300 million, and he goes and speaks to all of, like, the millionaires and stuff in Gotham to get them on site to help with this. Yeah. Um, Stag is one of the people that Bruce Wayne speaks to. Quite literally, every scene that Stag is in, Stag is trying to set up Bruce Wayne and his daughter. It's really <laughs> weird. It's, it's really weird. Very and really evil. Yeah. It's very creepy and every time Bruce Wayne I, is like I don't like any of this. I'm surprised that you haven't uh, mentioned yet that this is like the most Bioshock map you are in an airship, a kind of steampunk airship over the city it's very Bioshock yeah, weirdly it. Yeah. It. so tonight Scarecrow and the Arkham Knight have taken over the ship the scientists are dead and Stag has been captured it turns out that he's got something in here called the Cloud Burst a high tech device that will be able to distribute Scarecrow's toxin at pace throughout Gotham Batman finds Stag and asks him if he's seen Scarecrow. He is here. Yeah, Stag confirms that Scarecrow is here. He's deeper in the ship. Did he have anyone with him? Oh, you, you mean Barbara Gordon? Stag says. Flash. Joker stands in Stag's place. Well, I think we know she's probably dead, don't we, Bats? I wish that we got Joker in his prime and not Joker and his rotting zombie. I think it's... Note that the further into the game we go, Joker will look less and less ill. Oh! Yes. Okay. He actually looks... It, it's not too noticeable here, but you will start to notice as we go on that he will look less and less like his Arkham City version and more and more like his Arkham Asylum version. Okay. His prime, his prime days. Um. So, yeah, it's like, oh, I know we, she's probably dead. You know that, Bats. And then Joker attacks, multiplies, laughing, giggling, cackling. Batman has... And the only way I can describe this, honestly, is he has a panic attack. Many Jokers pin him to the floor, throttling the life out of him. And then, just as quickly as they arrived... They're I'm gone. really bothered by the fact that his gums you seem to, to separate. That, yeah. He's got separate gums. Mm -hmm. yeah. Each tooth has its own gums. He's got a horrible smile. It's just to make you uncomfortable. That's all. He's the Joker. Like You can look however he wants. Eh. Um, so, yes, all the Jokers pin him to the floor, throttling life out of him, and then they, pff, they vanish. And then Joker kind of like steps back into shot on his own and he goes, Nearly, Bats. I could feel you losing control there. A little more of that delicious fear gas and it'll all be over. <laughs> For you, anyway. He could use some Invisalign. He could use some Invisalign. Well, that's the main <laughs> thing he needs to fix. Okay, okay. I, 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 I touched on this back in Asylum. Uh, do, do you think that villains have dental care? They don't. Do, do they give insurance? No. Villain insurance. Alfred calls us up to tell us that none of the former Arkham City inmates who remain unaccounted for fit the Knight's profile. So, Arkham City, not the Arkham Knight. Batman tells him to go further back, look into the asylum. Did anyone in there have a military background? At the front of the ship, we find two scarecrows. Roll up, roll up, it's the Pick the Scarecrow show, Joker announces. Batman grabs one of the scarecrows, and as it spins around... Joker's face peeks out from behind the mask. <laughs> that is the goofiest looking Joker. <laughs> Bad luck, bats. <laughs> Scarecrow steps that is, you have stretched the Joker's face over a model that was not intended for that face. Yes. It's, 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 it's very brief. Like, it took me 10 minutes to find this shot because it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa gone. Um, Scarecrow steps into frame and he gasses Batman and Batman falls. That's not very nice of him. You're not dying, he hisses. It just feels like you are. My toxin is filling your lungs, drowning you in your greatest fears. What do you see? A city engulfed in fear, betrayed by those you trust the most, your darkest secrets revealed. As I tear your mind apart, Gotham will watch. I will cut that mask from your face. Then they too will understand. There is no savior. No more hope. No more Batman. Batman's eyes turn green. Maybe it's already happened, oh, Joker's God. voice says, leaving his lips. So Joker kind of takes over Batman's body for a second. He stands, picks up Scarecrow by the throat, and tosses him to the side. Batman, or Joker Batman, looks down at his body, flexes his muscles, and he's like, <laughs> Look at me! I'm amazing! And this body, oh, I can't believe how strong it is. <laughs> and it comes out of Batman's voice. He says all this. It's a really jarring moment. It's very yeah. silly. It's huh. great. A bunch of Scarecrow's militia run into the room, and as the joker fight Batman, we cleave through them. One hit attacks, each more brutal than the last. He doesn't kill the militia, but it definitely feels like he could at a moment's notice. So Batman seems to just be able to hold back control here. Such brutality, Scarecrow marvels. 
You were ready to kill these men, abandon your beliefs, everything you stand for. You tell yourself you are not like us, that you're better, but fear reveals the truth. Batman smashes him to the floor again, Scarecrow looks into his eyes, and his curiosity crumbles to legitimate fear. Joker slides back into frame and whispers in Batman's ear, Come on, finish him! He's no better than the creep who killed your parents. You need to stop him! A gun appears in Batman's hand. He raises it, his fingers trembling, and pulls the trigger. He closes his eyes, and when he opens them, Joker is gone, the gun is gone, only Scarecrow remains. He's alive, the, jo the gun was fake. He drops to his knees. Something's changed, Scarecrow hushes. You're different. I call it a work in progress, Joker's voice echoes around the room, but it does show potential. You're trapped, Batman says, gasping for air. There's, there's nowhere to run. Who said anything about running, Scarecrow says. Boom, the front of the airship explodes, the Arkham Knight arrives in a massive chopper and hooks huge wires onto the cloud burst machine. I'm still not interested in the Arkham Knight. The Darkham Knight? <laughs> he's just kind of, like, he's, he's not giving me a reason to be interested in him yet other than, who is he? Ooh. Totally fair. Holding on to it, Scarecrow and the Cloudburst fly off into the night. But Scarecrow doesn't leave us with nothing. He sends a signal and a clip of Barbara Gordon. She's trapped inside the penthouse in Chinatown, the same place Poison Ivy was held. Her chamber is slowly filling with gas. You stretched yourself too far this time, Batman, and now your failure is all but complete. As that final dying breath escapes her body, Barbara Gordon will know you failed her. Batman swoops off to rescue her. He's too late. What? Joker gasps. We hurry all the way here and Crane's killed her already? He's got no sense of occasion! Scarecrow appears on the screen behind Barbara's limp body. We both know that fear is theatrics, Batman, so permit me the indulgence of putting on this show. Oh, Joker laughs. Oh, maybe I got back face wrong. A blast of fear toxin awakens Barbara. What, what, what's happening, she mumbles. She looks at Batman, and terror appears on her face. No. No! Yes, Scarecrow groans. You see it now, Miss Gordon, the monster behind that glass. He will be your end, unless you pick up that gun and deny him. Barbara grabs the gun. She aims it at Bruce and opens fire, but the glass is bulletproof. They barely dent it. Please, please, and she starts to cry. Please, no! Barbara, don't listen, please! Batman's voice cracks as he bangs on the glass trying to break through. It's me, your friend! You won't get me, Barbara says. She raises the gun and places it to her head. I won't, I won't let you get me, bang. We don't see it. Joker steps into frame. Batman's mind stopped himself from needing to witness the death of another loved one. But when he steps away, Barbara Gordon's dead body sits in the chamber. You will bring death to all who follow you, Scarecrow growls, and ends his transmission. Sir? Sir, what's happened? Alfred calls in. She's... She's gone, Alfred. Scarecrow was punishing me. He... he killed her. I should have protected her. She's dead because of me. Alfred stifles a sob and reminds Batman of the mission. Scarecrow now has the cloud burst. The people of Gotham do still need him. We can't let Barbara's death be for nothing. Sir? Do you hear me? He heard you, Joker says, no longer laughing. He sounds grave, almost sympathetic. He's wondering how he can live with himself. You can't bring him back, Bruce. Let Uncle Jay take charge. No more pain, no more fear. Scout's honor. A beat, and then... Ivy, Batman gasps. Alfred, run a scan of the city. Let me know when you find the cloud burst. Ivy was immune to Scarecrow's toxin. She'll be able to stop it. Part four. Was Side she? quest time. She was immune to his toxin at the very, very beginning, yeah. That she said she came out, she went nothing like a little natural immunity. The fear gas does not affect her, so we might be able to use her. But we're going to kill the tension, uh, and uh, we're going to do side quests Yay! instead. This entire part is all the side quests that you do. Let's just wrap up some loose ends and stuff. Uh, so, what do you think about that before we, we cover this chase? Barbara Gordon has just killed herself. Morbid. Yeah, it's grim. Yeah, it's really dark. Yeah, I didn't see this coming when I started the game. This yeah. this is the moment that got me. Joker coming back with fear gas, I was like, it's probably going to happen at some point. Uh, not to the level we get it, 
this completely took me by surprise. Does she oft die in the comics? No, she is. Uh, she has not died to date. I think in main continuity. I mean, yeah. everyone's died at some point, but no, it's not really a thing. Yeah. Batman's died a couple of times, but he normally yeah. just gets sent back through time or some bullshit. Or Lazarus Pit. <laughs> Has to fight some cavemen to make it back. I, I want to remind you here, Chase, that like the Lazarus Pit, it's not a viable option. We're not. He's not going to put in the Lazarus Pit because it melts your mind, it makes you mad, and also the Lazarus machine in Under Gotham got destroyed at the end of Arkham City. So, um, but yeah. So, I'm going to run you through a bunch of Arkham Knight's side quests in this section because, to be honest, all that happens next is Batman goes to the GCPD, gets Ivy, and they work together to resurrect a massive tree that will be able to release spores that immunize Gotham to Scarecrow's fear toxin. We're going to pick up with that, that bullshit later. Is that literally the rest of the game? What's that? Is that literally the rest of the game? Not the rest of the game. It's at least the next two hours of gameplay, oh, okay. though. She um, again doesn't look green. Uh, she is green. She, she is, obviously looks she green. Is, <laughs> she is so white. If you came in looking this color, I would call an ambulance. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm legitimately... Does she look green to you? Yes. Am I oh. going colorblind? Apparently. She looks white. She's not. We're, it doesn't matter, right? We'll get back to Ivy in, I don't know, 30 minutes. So, side quest one we've already covered. That's Penguin. He's now locked up. Side quest two, we're going to cover Firefly. <gasps> Garfield! Old Garfield. Yeah, yeah Garfield Lins. So he's flying around Gotham blowing up fire stations. Can't have people spraying all that pesky water on his fires. He wasn't at the meeting Scarecrow organized. He's just making the most of the chaos. He just loves burning things. <laughs> so we chase him down in the Batmobile. Really yeah. toast that was on you. <laughs> we crush him into the dust and take him back to the GCPD. That is a deep cut to Arkham <laughs> Origins. So we take him back to the GCPD. But there's a fun little twist here. We later learn the Firefly was hired to target the fire stations by the fire chief. See, after Arkham City, the criminals all got recuperations because of what Hugo Strange did to them and how he treated them. Some of the criminals got out of jail because of it, others got massive payouts. We hear a couple of thugs even quip that they used the money to pay off their mortgage. <laughs> Which is I mean, great. yeah, fair enough. So, but because of this massive payout to the criminals, Cutbacks had to be made in other areas, namely the fire service. A bunch of firefighters were going to lose their jobs, and the fire chief thought that a firefly ramp got a fire, 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 that a firefly rampage would be just the kind of disaster needed to show Gotham that they can't sack a bunch of firefighters. Oh my god. Yeah. While Bruce Wayne was investing in the Arkham City Redevelopments Fund, the city itself was misusing those funds and sending it back to the criminals. Oh, great. So, you know, again, money doesn't solve everything. A lot more structure needs to be put in place to get Gotham working again. But that's his whole plot in a moment. Arresting the fire chief's actually kind of sad. Like, he gives... When you, when you find him, he gives himself up immediately. And he's like, I'm, I'm so sorry. Like, I, I did this for my men. And, like, nobody died. Um, and, and that's Batman's reaction. He's like, okay, nobody died, but I need to take you in, bro. I'm sorry. Uh, and it's, it's like a... He kind of regrets arresting him. Number three, Two-Face. You're going to like this one, Chase, because it's so short and sweet. Right. Harvey Two-Face is Robinson Banks. We stop him. They're great stealth yeah, levels. They are. That's it. Kind of tough, as I remember, those they stealth are. missions. Yeah. Um, we lock him away, but the Joker pops up when he's behind bars, and he's like, How is it hanging, Harv? I've always wanted to ask. Did, uh... Everything gets split down the middle. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, number four, Kirk Langstrom. Half of the butthole. <laughs> Only half. <laughs> So we find a destroyed lab underneath Gotham's tunnels. Uh, this is a quite a sad one. When Batman enters, a video recording plays. Kirk and his wife Francine were trying to cure chronic deafness by splicing the genes of bats. There you go. I'm so proud of you, honey, Francine says in the recording. Go on, tell them what you've done. Her haunting last words. Oh. Kirk sits nervously in a chair, staring at the camera, and he's like, um, hello world. Oh God, no, that's, that's terrible. He decided he was going to be the first human subject for his experiment, and he transformed himself... Man-Bat! Into Man-Bat! Yay! I mistakenly remembered this as happening in City. Ah. This is... Uh, do you mind if I... Mm -hmm. So this is an entirely organic moment. It gets triggered at a certain point in the in the story, but um, you are just flying around the open world, and Batman will basically, when you grapple to a rooftop... It's just an animation. He pulls himself up to the top of the roof and pulls himself over the top. And as you're in the open world, 
one time when he pulls himself over to the top, this appears in your face and screams at you. Mm. And it is a ver- it's it's probably one of the most effective jump scares in video gaming ever. Yes. Everyone who played it for the first time would have like dropped their controller. It's yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then later on, as a little giggle, um, they do this gimmick one more time, where as you're fl- you're grappling up again, you've stopped Man Bat by this point. You're grappling up again, and this time it's the same view, the same shot. I don't have the picture, and it's Joker, and he goes BOW! Yeah. <laughs> it's like ha ha! I always got you there, bats. Oh, you nearly slipped that time it's very very good yeah. um so yeah so so he, kirk langstrom mutated himself uh the, the, you know the gene splicing went wrong he destroyed the lab and he killed his wife francine which is why i personally find the the the, the fact and this this recording is looping when we walk in the two of them and it's that go on tell them what you've done yeah. tell them what you've done and right next to him is his dead wife this is it's really grim um so long story short batman captures him sorry you're gonna say something I was going to say, Langstrom's a very Spider-Man villain, isn't he? Brilliant scientist, trying to make the world better, um, and tragically it goes wrong. So Batman captures Man Bat, makes a cure to turn him human again, and when he brings him back to the GCPD, Kirk shatters when he learns his wife is dead. He's been Batman Bat this whole time, he didn't know. It's really sad. How do you undo gene splicing? No idea, it just he makes a cure, it's fine. You do a thing on his computer, you make the antidote, you give it to him, easy. I feel like it, by the time you've had physical alterations like that, yeah, that's not really undoable. If you go back to this location, um, at the end, in the end game, when you're just flying around, like getting collectibles or whatever, um, you, if you go back to the lab, um, Francine's body is dead. And there's like something, I can't remember exactly what it is, but something like scrawled on the floor, basically like, be with you soon, my love, or something. So, um, so it's not dead, sorry, Francie's body is gone, not dead. Francie's body is gone, so I'm just going like, oh, I'll be with you soon, my love. And if you go back out, there's another man bat flying around. You can't capture it, but the reading is that Francine is also a man bat. Because he probably killed her and bit her and turned her. Um, wow. it's, it's just a silly little thing in the end game. There's no plot there. Batman doesn't make a comment. It's just a thing that happens. It's fun. Uh, but yeah, next, anyway, uh, so number five, one of my favourites, a Grant Morrison original. Yes. Professor Pig. Yeah, oh, horrible. Horrible little man. So we find a bunch of corpses across the city, always with a speaker next to them playing opera music, and phrases written on the walls beside them like failure. Investigating each corpse, Batman and Alfred figure out that whoever's killing them is erasing fingerprints, performing weird cosmetic surgery on them and stuff. And um, so eventually... Batman tracks the killer down, and we meet Laszlo Valentin, a.k.a. Professor Pig. (laughs) He's singing operatically as he slices and dices a body on the table. Is that Porky? Mm. And the person on the table is like, they're still conscious. They're like, please, make it stop. I can't, I can't feel anything anymore. And Pig is like, wah, Pig, make it better. Pain is just body's way of saying thank you. You're all unique and wrong. You're done here, Valentin, Batman barks as he enters the surgery room. No, 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 no. She's all unique and wrong. All messed up. Pig, make her better. Pig, make all of us better. Pig can fix you, too. Pig, make you perfect like the others. Pig is like clay. Pig is like God. Pig is here to fix us all. You're insane, Batman growls. <laughs> so he's, what's his name from Bioshock? Uh, he's, he's a little bit Dr. Simon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally, yeah. And, and Batman's like, you're insane. And then Pig points his blade at him and it's like a, almost like a little switch flips in his brain. He goes, and what are you? And he's like, I'm here to stop you. <laughs> so yeah, big go. fight. <laughs> Mean, meanwhile, the Joker's dancing in the background. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah been a, it's been a long night. His, yeah. his qu- quips have really... <laughs> So we fight Pig and his Dolatrons, which is the people he's turning them into. Effectively, he's taking all their nerve endings out so they can't feel any pain. Um, Horrifying. Yeah, Yeah, really dark. He gives them cosmetic surgery, snip their nerve endings. It turns out the corpses we found were the throwaways, people he thought he couldn't fix. It's a great quest. It's very good. Stellar fight. And beautifully, the Dolatrons, because they've got no nerve endings, they don't feel pain. So you can't, like, shock them and electrocute them or anything. So you just have to, like, choke them out and knock them out. It's very good. So, uh, number six, remember this guy, Asriel. <laughs> hey. Hey. Uh, it's good to actually see his full body now so he doesn't look like a ninja. Yes, yeah. His outfit's better in night. It's better in night. Um, so, if you remember, Asriel was the guy in Arkham City who told Batman that the dark OG times are coming. Night. The OG yeah. night, yeah. Uh, so, he's like, oh, remember, dark times are coming, Batman. City's going to be on fire soon. It's going to be your end. He predicted Arkham Knight effe- effectively. Um, so, he works for an organization called the Order of St. Dumas, a big cult, fearing that tonight might actually be the end. Batman agrees to train him up and see if he can take on the mantle of the bat if he dies or turns into the Joker. 
How spontaneous. Yes. As, I mean, Asriel pitches this idea this and Batman is, goes, I'll see is, what you got. This is lifted directly from the comics. Asriel became Batman. Yes. After he's being he's just back. fully blocking the Robins from his mind. Yeah. They could, they could do shit. Well, pretty much, Awful. what they really are, they're combat challenges where you play as Asriel. Um, for reasons I don't really remember, Batman is able to scan Asriel's memories to learn more about this mysterious Order of Saint Dumas. It turns out that the Order is a cult that have brainwashed Asriel into thinking he's Gotham's protector, and he's been ordered to kill Batman, not just take over for him. Worst of all, Bats learns that if Asriel were to replace him, he would kill criminals, not just arrest him, which is something that happens in the comics. Yeah. Um, it's it's, oh, it's such a god awful comic like comic book storyline. Yeah. Fucking hate it. Um, because like you're with Azrael for so long, and you're just saying you're going like, where's Batman? I don't it's like a, this it's guy. A, it's, a good, it's a good idea in in isolation, I think, yeah. but it's yeah. So bare bones, that storyline. So anyway, uh, Batman tells him all of this. It's buried in Asriel. He thinks he's serving a higher purpose. He doesn't realize he's been brainwashed. And Asriel's like, liar! You stand in the way of true justice. I know who I am. He swings his sword at Batman, but Batman dodges it, breaking the sword and knocking Asriel out. That is the canon way. I am not not accepting. Do you so want to point out what you mean by the canon you, way? You go, you, you go ahead. Oh, well, I'll see if I can remember it. So there's, there's, there are two choices, right? This is the only... This is the second and only and then final choice you get in this franchise. You're playing where as Asriel. Batman turns his back and you're playing as Asriel and you have the option to go up and stab Batman in the back with your sword. <laughs> or like surrender. I, I would I would have stabbed and, Batman. And either way, it doesn't work because Batman will grab the sword and snap it. Yeah. If you try to stab Batman, Batman snaps it, beats him up, takes him to the GCPD. If Asriel surrenders, Asriel, Batman's like, all right, see you later then. Brainwashing undone. And Asriel goes off into the night. End of story. It's shit. He's a shit character. Who cares? Fuck you, fight me comments. Why does uh, he have a ninja face, though? Uh, who cares? The I'm rest boring. of him looks so good. Number seven, Deacon Blackfire. Jack Ryder, Gotham's number two <laughs> reporter. <laughs> Yay! He's holed up in the GCPD for the entire game. Uh, he's desperately trying to unravel a conspiracy he's learned about. It turns out that a man called Deacon Blackfire has been taking home has been taking homeless people off the streets, giving them a hot meal. That's not very nice, man. Oh wait, yes, that is good. Oh no, that's not. That's hot. nice. This bit isn't. He's brainwashing the homeless people to his own savage cult. More cults. Blackfire claims that he's over 200 years old and salvation will come to Gotham if a sacrifice is offered up. That doesn't seem right. Batman pops by to visit Jack and tells him he needs to back off. Whatever he's looking into, we'll handle it. Uh, but Ryder's like, nuh uh, you just want all the glory for yourself. I found out all this information without you and I'm gonna get an interview with Blackfire. I'm gonna get a Pulitzer. Oh, also, I heard all about this Arkham Knight character. You know, the clues in the name, right? Arkham Knight? <laughs> Arkham Asylum? He's probably from that old cuckoo's nest. Don't beat yourself up over it. You're not a journalist. Eventually, Ryder leaves the safety of the GCPD. We know that journalists are better detectives than detectives. Oh. Apparently. Batman, the first thing he did was consider yes. Arkham uh, Asylum. <laughs> well, didn't he consider Arkham City first? Well, the same people. Who cares about Asylum? Well, yeah, well, he's working his way backwards. <laughs> All the same people from Asylum were put into City, I guess. So. Oh, um, I also just want to make a quick note. We're rewinding entirely before we get to a black fire, because I just want to note this. Because there are people out there who are like, oh no, our Origins isn't canon. Rocksteady have stated Origins canon because in this game, a couple of things happen. First is, Firefly, when you're chasing him down, he's like, as you're doing it, he's like, last time we fought, we were on the bridge. And it was, and it's like, okay, you're just describing the Origins yeah. fight. Second is, uh, as you're flying around, remember Anarchy? Yeah. yeah. The, the teenager. So you hear a couple of goons as you're flying around and they're like, hey, anybody remember that anarchy kid? He would have loved this. Like, because it's all <laughs> chaos and stuff. And you also, if you go into, there's a big trophy room with old, like, weapons and stuff belonging to Batman's rogues. Um, and you can find, like, Anarchy's mask from Origins, stuff like that. Mm. Just want to flag that Rocksteady make Origins canon because we were talking about it earlier. So, eventually, Jack Ryder... Gotham's number two reporter, leaves the safety of the GCPD and tracks down Deacon Blackfire. And of course, Blackfire decides that Jack Ryder would just be perfect for the sacrifice that they need. <laughs> and he's like, my brethren, we are gathered here in honor of the one true father. And he's, he's announcing it to his cult. And it's like, he who slaves the wicked and evil forces that threaten to destroy us and keep our souls, blah, 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 cult shit. Um, Batman lands, he's like, stop it. And then Blackfire's like, who disrupts this ritual? This is sacred ground, heathen. You do not belong here. Well, 
up, we beat up the cultists, kick Blackfire's ass, save Jack Ryder, and bring him back to the GCPD. Nice. And uh, as jo as we do it, Joker's like, You think this Blackfire's a real priest, Batsy? It's just, I owe Gotham Church an apology for this incident with the hydrochloric holy water. <laughs> <laughs> that was one hell of a baptism. Which, ugh. <laughs> Jesus, that is horrible. Yeah. At number eight, Lucius Fox. Bruce Wayne goes to visit Lucius in Wayne Tower. He's not in his back costume. Weird. Uh, yeah, like he, he walks past the receptionist, so he's just trying to be, you know. So he walks by and uh, Fox's receptionist is like, Mr. Wayne, I, I thought you got out. It sounds terrible out there. What's Don't. the receptionist still doing here? What, this is terrible. <laughs> yeah. Send her away. She's like, yeah. She's like, Mr. Wayne, um, it's it's all it's all going to shit. He's like, you have your hours. Look, uh, Mr. Fogg said I ran out of PTO, so. So like, do you want health insurance? <laughs> so he walks in. He's like, don't worry, this will be all over soon. And he heads through to Fox's office, but strangely, Lucius isn't in the office. Uh -oh. He tries to log into Fox's computer, but the retinal scanner doesn't work. That's odd. Fox finally enters, and he's like, Mr. Wayne, I, I just finished securing the building. Is something wrong? Bruce grabs Lucius and forces his face into the retinal scanner before slamming his head off of the desk. Why? Yeah. We, I, I will say it comes up as a prompt for the player and it's like, uh, use the retinal scanner when Lucius comes <laughs> forward. Uh, we watch as he starts to transfer funds from the Wayne account to somewhere else, some other bank account. Why? And that's when Batman enters. Why? The identity thief, Batman growls. From <laughs> Arkham City. Days. From yeah. Arkham City, Thomas Elliot. This is Hush. Remember the bandaged up guy? Oh, yeah. That made himself look like Bruce Wayne? This is this plot line coming oh, to fruition. okay. So Thomas grabs Lucius and puts a gun to his head and is like, I have a job for you, Batman. Bring me Bruce Wayne or I bring down this tower. Yeah. And, uh, and Batman's like, why Wayne? The two of you were friends. And he's like, that brat's family destroyed me and now I will destroy him. The two of you were friends. And I seem to remember my friend Bruce Wayne telling me <laughs> that when you were 10, he loaned you $5. <laughs> and that's how close of a friend you were. And he wasn't even that mad that you never paid him back, he said. Pretty much what Batman says. But also yeah. with interest, it's going to be like a couple thousand by now. Well, yeah, Batman's like, Thomas Wayne did everything he could to save your parents' life after the car crash. I'm sorry about your father, but Thomas saved your mother's life. And then Thomas sneers and he goes, he denied me what was rightfully mine. Bruce Wayne had his riches handed to him on a plate after his parents died. He's never had to fight for anything in his life. Thomas Wayne denied me that when he saved my mother. Now bring me Wayne or I'll destroy this tower and everything it stands for. And he cocks the gun. And uh, Batman takes off his mask. Take your best shot, Tommy. Thomas Elliot reels back and is like, what? No, imp impossible. But Batman's too fast. He knocks the gun out of Thomas's hand, kicks him back into the desk, and Lucius finishes the job by smacking him across the jaw with an ornament. Fox then just like fixes his tie. He's like, yeah. He goes, you have my apologies. Rest assured, I will improve our security. And Batman's like, it's not your fault, Lucius. And there's this face that looks like his, and he squints at it and he says, I can't take him to the GCPD. Have him locked in the vault here. <laughs> And that's that. <laughs> so Why can't you take him to the GCPD? Well, because he looks like, well, because he knows that Bruce Wayne is Batman. Oh, sorry, Bruce Wayne is Batman. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry. No. Yeah, yeah, so there you go. Um, so yeah, uh, number nine, Mad Hatter. He's back. Uh, Yay, my favorite. Weird <laughs> favorite. Yeah, he's such a weird little man. So Hatter hands himself into the GCPD, and he tells Batman that he's planted some bombs across Gotham Classic. Batman tracks him down, deactivates them. When he returns to confront Hatter, he's rhyming away to himself, and he's like, The night returns, all with malice. Tell me, Batman, did you find your Alice? And, uh, but this has been Tetch's plan all along. He used trickery, brainwashing, subliminal sounds near the bombs to get under Batman's skull and into his brain. Suddenly, Batman finds himself in a storybook. Through the rhyming words we tumble, the Hatter giggles, where villains toil and psyches crumble. Time to play a game. I'm here to make you understand what drives a man insane. The storybook documents the events of Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, but the language is twisted, painting Batman as a monster and his rogues as the victims. Batman fights the brainwashing, beats the crap out of Hatter. What? No! I had you! Don't you see? You're mad! You're mad! Just like me! 
Uh, but we have three side quests left. For the sake of pacing, I don't think Batman does them yet. So... <laughs> <laughs> At least they didn't make him Nancy this time. Yeah, yeah, this is just a pure, like, this is, this is, like, a dying man's last gasp to try and convince Batman that he's insane. That's all this is. No non-stuff. It does seem to be a running theme is that everybody wants to be like, hey, you're just like us! Yeah. Arguably guilty conscious come to the fruition, which is like, there's this, you know, herald of, of goodness that every day stops you, and you're like, no, you, you have to be as bad as me. I don't do bad things. The Herald of Darkness. Yes, that's October. <laughs> so, I don't understand. <laughs> Part five, the Panessa Movie Studios. So Ivy's tree grows and grows. Her plants coat a part of Gotham, and the two of them. <gasps> Her meet skin nearby. is finally green. This is literally the least green she's looked the entire no, game. That is the most green she's looked <laughs> oh, the entire I can't, game. I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless. The, the tree is growing and it's great, right? And um, she, she needs a little bit of time. And she basically says she should be strong enough to neutralize Scarecrow's toxin. We just need to find the cloud burst now. So Batman heads back to the Belfry to see if he can locate it via satellite. And then an emergency call comes up on screen. Henry Adams, the school teacher that Batman is trying to use to find a cure for the Joker toxin, pops up and he goes, Batman, the movie studios are under attack. Robin is in trouble. And just as he's finishing up, a red baseball bat clops him in the side of his head and he falls to the ground. Any guesses? Harley! That's enough from you! Harley gives a devilish grin. And Batman goes, Harley Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> just in case we don't know who she is. And she's like, oh, you don't remember me. That's weird because you killed the only thing I ever loved and now I find you've been keeping a whole new generation of jokers to yourself. <laughs> Awkward! <laughs> So uh, Batman's like, don't let them out, Harley. They're not stable. And she's like, oh, they are not stable? Maybe you want to take a look in the mirror sometime. So she hangs up and we go to the studio. As Batman steps into the elevator, a familiar jingle plays. Dum, da, dum, dum. Oh, into the that? asylum. Yes, it's the theme from Arkham Asylum. We turn and there's Joker. <laughs> sitting in the standing gurney and you'll see the Arkham logo on the screen and everything. Um, and he's like, Ah, memories. You, me, and a ward full of psychotic killers. <laughs> you've never felt so at home, have you? Oh, come on, you think you're different because you've never killed anyone. Newsflash, you killed me. I was there, remember? You destroyed my cure right in front of me. Watched me choke in my last laugh. And then, after killing me, you said you would have shared. <laughs> you couldn't even admit that I'd won, could you? Not even as a parting gift. So... There you go. This is Batman's like, worst fears manifest, his inter inner dialogue, literally stating, you murdered the Joker. I do like by the time we get to this Arkham parallel, he's finally back in his prime. He's Yeah, the lighting shows, you can't quite see it, but he's still peeling a little bit, but he's definitely close to back in his prime. Absolutely. I'm mainly looking at it from the, the suit is so much less tattered. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, so Batman reunites with Robin in the main chamber. Uh, Robin raises the, it's weird, Harley just kind of like walked in here. All the security had been shut down. She's taken Henry Adams hostage and let the three Jokers loose. So, three Jokers? Um, three Jokers loose. So, deeper into the movie studios we go, working with Robin to capture the various Jokers and stop Harley. It's clear that Harley's very much here to release the Jokers so she can be back with her beloved Mr. J. They literally have the Joker's personality. It's like he sent his memories into them with his blood or some shit. So, um, she's like, let me tell ya, it's been tough not seeing Mr. J's beautiful face day after day, but now, well, now I've got three new Jokers, each perfect in their own right. Christina Bell is easy to take down. She embodies Joker's obsession with Batman and she doesn't want to join Harley. She shoots at Harley's goons and is like, if Batman sees how you've treated me, he's gonna get ya. Albert King, Goliath, is a mini boss fight. He embodies Joker's violent side, his rage. He's like, I'm gonna make you cry for pain and beg for mercy. But we beat him up and tie him up with Robin's help. No Lord Dump can really make you feel how much of an asset Robin is in these fights. You get a swap between the two of them again, do dual takedowns, we do a whole stealth arena, it's a lot of fun. Nice. Very, this is a Batman and Robin moment. You feel how strong they are together. Johnny Charisma is my favorite. This is the one, I, the only one I remembered out of these three. So he embodies Joker's showmanship. When we find him, he's strapped bombs to a bunch of oil drums. He has a show for us. All we need to do is stand still, enjoy it, and he won't blow the place up. 
Robin sneaks through vents and disarms the bombs while Batman distracts him. Yeah, it's sort of like a quiz show, isn't it? I don't know if you were going to describe it. <laughs> I'm about to describe okay, it. yeah, yeah. Don't worry, I've got it. So he's, he, as, as we're entering, he goes, as you can see, the crowd is so excited, it may just explode. And there's, then jazzy swing music kicks in. And in a flash, Joker stands in Charisma's place, a microphone in hand. And yes, he starts to sing. <laughs> Yay! We get a full musical. A full number. He goes, sing to me. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but he goes, nobody serenades you like me, Bat. Take it away. And, da, 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 da. and then the lights come in, you hear it. And it's like, take me on home to the asylum. Ever alone in the asylum. Anarchy ruled. It was wild. But through it all, you never smiled. Well, joke's on you. I'm in your head. So look who's laughing now. It's that for three. Three minutes. <laughs> I'm obsessed. And while this is happening, um, you see you fla- flash back to Robin's perspective, and he's behind the podiums, yeah. sneaking around. And the trick to this one is you've got to wait till Johnny Charisma slash Joker has his back turned and is looking at Batman and yeah. Superman. But but it's just an excuse to have a three minute Joker song. You again. can get this over and done within twenty seconds. Every time I play this, I wait till the song's over because when the song ends, it it loops a little bit. Joker basically goes one more time. <laughs> so yeah, um, but we, we do it. Uh, the whole song is Joker taunting Bats and recounting the simpler times of the asylum takeover of how he killed Tally in Arkham City when he killed Jason Todd. Wasn't it all fun? And it's very much supposed to be a bit of like, uh, remember how easy things used to be, and now the city is on fire and you've got the Joker stuck in your melon. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of the vibe. But we beat him, and then the laughter stops. Batman turns a corner, and he sees someone tied to a wheelchair. Candles light the floor. The room looks like a medical ward in Arkham Asylum. He approaches, and we see that it's Robin. Not Tim Drake. Not Dick Grayson. This is Jason Todd. The Robin that Joker killed. Barbed wire is tied around his body. A bag is on his head. Jason, Batman falters. I I thought you were dead. Joker steps out of the darkness, a vision of the past. Batman? Jason mumbles. Is that you? Batman's not coming to save you, Jason, Joker leers. It's been six months now. It's time to face facts. Screw you! Jason spits blood onto the floor. Ha ha ha! That's the spirit! You're a chip off the old bat block. Not that it'll do you any good. Oh, why don't you just kill me? His Jason arms Ross. almost look like they're separating from his body. Yeah, they are. Like, the idea here is that he's probably been hanging like this for about a month. I cannot underestimate how much torture he goes through. It's inferred, mainly. The comic is brutal. The comic was... Ba- it felt like the writer's going, Oh, you really wanted this, did you? Mm. Well, this is what this looks like. Yeah. And it's a little boy being tortured, then beaten to death. Yeah, it's um, horrible. It's horrible. Well, so yeah, he's like, why won't you just kill me? And he's like, I'm not going to kill you. Not yet, anyway. You're my sidekick now. You and me will be a regular dynamic duo, just like Batman and that new kid of his. And Jason looks at him and goes, no, he wouldn't. And Joker's like, really? Joker pulls out a new picture of Batman and Tim Drake out on patrol together. And I will point out that in the comics, yeah, it was really fast. Yeah. Like, three months tops after Jason died. And the writers were like, oh, shit, Batman sucks without Robin. People aren't enjoying this. And they made a new Robin for, for him to get. And it's very similar to this. And this Caught a new one. Three months. <laughs> Caught a new one. Uh, so he goes, so this isn't Batman then? Oh, I don't want to show you this photo, Jason, but it's the only way for you to get closure. Now, I know it hurts, but sometimes you got to be cruel to be kind. He pulls out a cruel bar. And he smacks Jason across the face with it. And then he does it again, and he does it again, and he does it again. The vision warps, and it changes. And it's some time later, still in Arkham Asylum. So the reading of this is that Joker had, like, a room somewhere that he kept Jason up for all this time. He managed to smuggle him in, and he tortured him. In this continuity. Jason has... and And Batman didn't know that he was still alive. So Jason hangs from a hook in the middle of the room. Joker enters, and immediately Jason starts to tremble and whimper. Oh, what's wrong? Oh, do, do, do you think I'm going to hurt you? <laughs> Why, I, I'm not the bad one here. No, 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 no. It's, it's Batman. He, he abandoned you, remember? Threw you away like an unwanted puppy. Jason doesn't respond. He doesn't play the game. He's being boring. So Joker starts to entertain himself. This is probably one of my favorite moments. It's, it's so horrible. It's one of my favorite Joker scenes. 
Can I have him, Daddy? Oh, please, 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 I'll take real good care of him. He starts, like, playing out a scene, and he's almost speaking for Jason in this to, like, he's like, you're not responding to me, so I'm speaking for you. Anything to make you happy, princess. Just make sure people know he's yours. Joker clicks his fingers, and Jason drops to the floor. Jason starts to desperately wriggle out of the room. Oh, we don't want him to end up back here now, do we? And then beat, beat, beat. No, no, we won't, Daddy. I want to keep him forever. And over it, Jason starts to scream for help. I actually feel a bit sick. Also, to make this worse, we learn uh, through incidental dialogue and stuff that while all of this was going on over this course of six months, it's not just Joker who tortures him. I am going to point out that Harley also joins him. Scarecrow joins him. Croc joins in, Bane joins in. Joker invites them to get their 10 minutes of fun with the Robin. Huh. It's really messed up. Uh, yeah, yeah. Jason moves out of shot. We hear him wrestling with someone in the darkness, and then a high pitched scream and a sizzle, as if Joker has burned him. Oh, I, wa I was when wondering, he's been walking around with a brand, and you kept saying crowbar. I'm like, is that not a brand? Uh, it is a crowbar in one shot, and now it's a brander. Um... Sorry, yes. Um, because it really what they do is they do this a few different ways. You, 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 rest, you stop a joker and then you see your vision. You stop a joker, you see your vision. I've combined it all. Um, so after all this is done, um, the, the darkness burns away and Batman turns and kind of takes a minute to himself. And then Tim Drake appears. And Tim's like, everything okay? You, you look spooked. I'm fine, Jason. I mean, Tim. And Tim takes a minute and he goes, you haven't done that for a while. Anyway, we capture Harley Quinn and we bring her to the main room. But a surprise is waiting for us. The three Jokers we apprehended are all dead. Someone shot them. Harley screams and breaks down in tears immediately. She's like, no, my puddings! And uh, then we see... Any guesses who you think we're about to see? The Arkham Knight again. Henry Adams. Oh. His hair green, his skin white. Aww. He was never immune. He was just able to hide it. He embodies Joker's calculatedness, his planning, his, mm -hmm. his cleverness. Um, he points a gun at Batman. He goes, He's really creepy. He is. He is. He's a creepy, creepy old man. Um, he, he points a gun at Batman. He's like, Oh, Bats, you are so easy. Desperate to see the good in people. And he cackles with a big Joker grin. And he goes, Especially when they're bad. He clicks his fingers and Harley runs over to him. And then she's, she puts her hand on him like, I'm, oh, okay, I, you, I'm your side. Never mind, got one back. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, he, he let Harley into the movie studio. This has all been his plan. Evolution's a funny thing, Henry laughs. The strongest always survives, no matter the obstacles. And then Henry sees it. A flash of green in Batman's eyes. Oh, now that's unexpected. And then he smiles and he says, you're going to be spectacular. And Henry Adams shoots himself dead. Harley falls to the floor. She's like, no, no, not again. And Robin's like, your eyes. Oh, you're the last Joker? The fifth cell, it's, it's for you. And Batman looks at him and doesn't barely responds to anything of that. And he just says, I need to stop Scarecrow. When I'm done, I'm locking myself away. Robin is furious that Batman lied to him and it's about to get a whole lot worse for him. Mm. Batman throws, uh, so uh, they, they stick Harley in a cell. Uh, she's locked away now, Not no longer a threat. Batman then throws Robin into the fifth cell and locks the door. I, Why? I'm doing the right thing, trust me. Robin yells, tries to break the door, and when that fails, he tries to call an Alfred. He's like, you son of a bitch, you kept my communications, what are you doing? Alfred calls up and asks if Robin's okay. He can't seem to reach him, and once again, Batman lies. And he goes, uh, he's fine, faulty comms line. Batman turns to Robin and he's like, Tim, Barbara's dead. Tim doesn't know how to Jesus respond. Christ. Yeah, Tim does not know how to respond. Wave after wave is crashing on him. It's clear now why Batman locked him away. If he learned what Scarecrow had done, he'd go after him. And if he did that, he'd probably get himself killed as well. And then, the room goes dark. Jason Todd sits in a chair with a film camera staring at him. He's been branded, a red letter J carved into his cheek. Joker lurches out of the darkness and stands behind the camera. Have you got something to tell the nice man, Jason? He grins. My name is Jason Todd. And who do you hate? Batman. Excellent. Of course you do. Did you get that, Bats? Kid's not yours anymore. He's mine, 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 mine. To do with as I wish. Hey, JC, I never did ask. What's the secret? Who is the big bad bat? Tell me. Of course, sir, Jason mutters tiredly. It's bang. 
Joker shoots Jason. He flies back, dead. Never could stand a tattletale. <laughs> That's why I like to work alone. Nobody to spoil the punchline. This is what happens when you drag your friends into this crazy little game of ours. Which is obviously what was on the wall, killing Joker. And this is, presu- this is presumably the final video or re- representative of the video that, that Joker sent Batman years ago. Arkham VR is this. Arkham VR, oh. no, not actually, it's a dream Batman has, and in it, everybody dies. Nightwing dies, Robin dies, and, and then it ends with Batman picking up this tape, and you can watch this in VR. It's this tape from the camera's perspective. Uh, that's you've, not really, you've not really sold it to me, I'll be honest. Really put yourself in. Trauma, you want to experience all yeah, of the Batman with none of the fun, all of the trauma? Well, there's a fantastic sequence in it where it's all very good for the VR bit because it's, it's spooky. And there's a bit where um, in the dream, you are locked inside a cell in a sewer with Tim Drake's Robin and Killer Croc is in the water around you. Oh. And Croc will keep coming up and trying to get to the bars and you've got to move out of the way. And when all is said and done, Croc gets Tim and, and takes him into the water with him and Tim dies. It's a dream. It's a bad dream. He's just panicking about like the worlds that he will leave behind if he dies but through that Arkham VR you learn that Batman's like turning into a Joker you learn all those right, bits okay. so that's why I've saved that um, so yeah uh, part 6 fear gas leaving the studios a couple of things happen the first is Ivy climbs inside the giant tree that they're using and yes she looks green here uh, she, she tells Batman that she needs more time to prepare the neutralizing agent and disperse it into the air the second thing that happens is they run out of time. The Cloudburst is attached to a tank controlled by the Arkham Knight. It roams the streets of Gotham and explodes. Fear, as in like it shoots it, it doesn't blow up, it shoots it into the air. Fear gas clouds the city. The criminals, inmates, hell, half of Scarecrow's army, they all go mad with fear. Not for the first time tonight, Batman has lost. Ivy tells us that we need to destroy the He's not very good at this. He's not very good at this. No, he's failed again. Um, Again, Arkham Knight knows all of his moves, knows where he's going to, he can predict him so easily. Uh, so Ivy tells us that we need to destroy the Cloudburst and buy her some time to prepare the neutralizer. So that's Is exactly what we do. Mayhaps I'm being wishful oh. to think that potentially the Arkham Knight is Jason Todd. Mm. That's an interesting theory. What, what makes you think that? Uh, because he knows everything about Batman, including his weaknesses. Yeah, I really like that. I, I like we, that as a theory. We did yeah. see Jason get shot, but I do like that theory. Mm. Yeah, but can we trust a video sent by the Joker? That's... Chances are he could be good at CGI if he's good at chemical <laughs> engineering. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or maybe he just, you know, grazed like him. Sit on it. Yeah. Rubber bullet. Sit it's a good it. theory. You will find out who the Arkham Knight is before the game's over. Don't worry. It's not an ambiguous thing. You will find out who this is. Um, but yeah, it's a good theory for you to have. I'm glad that you've got a theory. Um, so yeah, we're going to continue. So... Batman has lost. Uh, Ivy's like, I need more time to make the neutralizer, so you need to go and destroy the Cloudburst. So that's exactly what we do. Into the Batmobile we go, and the Arkham Knight calls us up. And he's like, Batman, Batman just stop. Stop, stop acting, acting like, like a hero. hero. Stop, stop thinking, thinking you could save, save anything. anything. Oh, you You're found a tree. tree. Scary. Come and find me then, and we'll settle this. So we find the Cloudburst, we blow it to hell, and stop it from spewing the toxin. Batman, it's still in the air though, but we stopped it from continuing to spew it out. Batman leaps on top of the hatch, opens it, grabs the Arkham Knight, and grapples to a nearby rooftop. Are we not worried about the wind anymore? We are worried about the wind. We're trying to send out the neutralizing agent before the wind picks it up. Knight grapples with us, but Batman gets him on his back and starts punching the daylights out of him. The mask comes off. That's not very nice. And it's the Joker. God damn it. The night gets away, it's just a hallucination. The night gets away, and worst of all, we've lost contact with Ivy. Batman glides onto her tree, and when he finds her, she's not looking good. Parts of her skin are flaking off. The toxin was starting to poison her tree, and she felt every noxious gas as it infected her plants. She let the tree absorb her energy so it could survive, and so it could spread the, 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 the antidote. But she collapses into Batman's arms. Anti-villain. I- Ivy? Batman hushes. She tries to smile, but she's too weak even for that, just managing to gasp out her last words. Nature always wins. And Pamela Isley, Poison Ivy, dies. Her body crumbles, turns to pollen, and spreads out into the air. With the tree, we have neutralized the cloudburst and the toxin. She sacrificed herself, not for Gotham, but for the plants that she holds so dear. Her final act was a noble one, Alfred says in our ear. Um, and it's worth me noting that Gotham changes now. Um, the, 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 you see the pollen as you're flying around. It like you know, whistles by and stuff. It's very beautiful. I don't have any shots, I'm afraid, but it's very nice. So Batman needs to find out where the Arkham Knight went. 
while he does, um, and again, it's just like finding satellites and shit. Uh, while he does that, the last couple, let's do the last couple of side quests. So, first of all, the League of Assassins. Oh. <sighs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. It wouldn't be one of these games unless you shoved every last villain in here. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, I will say that three of these three are uh, DLC. Uh, these three and the Mad Hatter one are DLC. Um, I've just put them in because some of them are quite fun. This is whatever. Um, so the League of Assassins have been locked in their own little civil war the entire night. After he was impaled in Arkham City, Raish's followers recovered his body and plugged him into like a mini Lazarus pit machine that they've got, like the last one. He's alive, but not looking well. In fact, he's so sick that the League are now fighting over whether we should follow him or get a new leader. When Batman finds him in the Thomas Elliot Memorial Hospital, he's hooked up to, which is the hospital mem memorializing Thomas Hush's parents. Uh, it doesn't matter. And uh, we find them there. He's hooked up to a Lazarus machine, but they've run out of the Dionysium needed to totally resurrect him. He's like clinging on to life. He's a shell. Help me, detective, Ra Raish we wheezes. For Talia. Batman heads out, finds the Dionysium, and meets the head of the rebel assassins, Nissa Al Ghul. I'm sorry, there's more Dionysium. Apparently. So you can make another antidote. Maybe. <laughs> Why has he not cured anybody? Because that was in the DLC, Chase. Oh. <laughs> you mean the DLC that they've now put into the base game? Not in the base game. Uh, I've added this in. <sighs> yeah. Uh, so very regardless, um, so Nissa Al Ghul shows up. Who the fuck is she? Good question. She is Raish's other daughter. You got Talia and you got Nissa. So she's Talia's sister. <sighs> So Batman's like, does Raish know his daughter fights for the rebels? And she's like, the rebels fight for me. And that zombie no longer knows his own name or the day of the week or even that his other daughter died. We see that that stings Batman, the mention of Talia. And he goes, why? Why? Because he loved her. Because he loved her. How? Why? Because he loved her. What? We covered this in Arkham City. I'm not regaling that to you. Yeah. yeah. We've all said that it's shit, but he did love Talia. <laughs> so it stings him and he goes, I'm sorry about Talia. And this is like, she was a loyal fool. I am neither. Nissa gives Batman a choice. Either he goes back to where Raish is and unplugs him from the Lazarus machine, killing him. And if he does that, she'll take the League of Assassins out of Gotham for good. But if he goes back and saves him, the League will ignite into a civil war that will burn the city to the ground. The player gets this, this choice. Um, I don't know. What, what do you do? What what won't burn the city to the ground? Yeah, legit. Yeah, what, what do you want to do? Do you want to save race or, or turn off the machine? Well, save race because, I mean, at this point, we're, we're just, we'll just save the city again. Probably it's fine. Yep. Sure. Cool. Okay, so good, because that's the only one I wrote for, because that's always <laughs> what I do. <laughs> And so oh, that's good, because I was about to say kill until they all <laughs> jumped in. Well, um, my Batman administers the cure because Batman doesn't kill, and I think withholding the cure is tantamount to killing, personally. Uh, people people do make a really fair case that Raish is technically dead already, which, to be honest, fair, but in this playthrough, let's just give him the Dionysium and let's save him. Didn't he die, though, because of Batman? So is this not Batman being like, I can bring you back to life so I didn't actually kill you? Raish, Raish threw himself Raish out of a window, himself, Batman yeah. tried to save him, and then Raish tried to kill them both, and Batman got out of the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like the Joker, you know, like, he didn't kill him, he killed himself. Um, Batman just failed to save him. So, all of this happens, um... Those are the same things as Batman's mind, though. When Batman walks up, he goes, I'm not doing this for you. And as Raish's body reacts and he starts to be restored to full strength, Nyssa arrives and she's like, no! And then Raish croaks at him and goes, Nyssa, daughter, traitor. He picks up a sword, whirls through the air, and cuts her in half before dropping a smoke bomb and disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> Extra. Batman kneels by Nyssa as she dies. We can heal you. We, we can use the Lazarus machine, he says. And Nyssa's like, no, I'm not like him. You should have let him die, stubborn, stupid fool. It's why she loved you. And she dies. Next, uh, Iron Heights. <laughs> so Nightwing calls Batman up and tells him that the prison airship, Iron Heights, has crashed out of the sky and into the Cotham Bay. The other airship? Yeah, it's a third airship. Together, our dynamic duo go to investigate. We see when we arrive that something has torn through the prison, killing guards, inmates, everything. We also see that if we thought Arkham Asylum was cruel to his prisoners, Iron Heights was something else altogether. Oh, damn it. The inmates weren't held in cells. They were strapped inside giant metal coffins oh. that were suspended over the air. Of course. And to make things worse, uh, the warden of Iron Heights was experimenting on the patients. Uh, of course. I, yeah. it, would, would he be a warden if he didn't? Well, <laughs> we find a recording of him where he documents some of his notes and he says, 
The creature's regenerative healing factor is quite remarkable. The subject's hand has now completely regrown, but as an aside, its physiology is altering. Sorry, is this fucking what's his name got his hand eaten off by Croc? Cash. Possibly an adaptive response to trauma. Sedatives are becoming less effective. Termination, although undesirable, must be considered. And then we see the subject in question. Killer Croc. Well, yeah, I mean, I knew that. But... He strapped the warden into a surgical chair. Let me... The warden's just a guy. Uh, he's like, let me go. And Croc's like, you made me worse. Fix me. We're going to rip your head off. See if that grows back. But first, you're going to suffer like we suffered. You won't hurt us anymore. And Batman is like, the warden was trying to weaponize Whalen's condition. He says this to Nightwing. And Nightwing's like, and it looks like Croc wants payback. Can't say I blame him. I smell you, bat! Croc roars, looking into the shadows. It's your aftershave, Nightwing winks. Which I think is quite, <laughs> it's quite a good line. I think it's quite good. I keep, a, I keep a can of Lynx Africa in the Batman meal. <laughs> um, Croc hears him, though. Croc hears Nightwing's comment, sees where they are, and lunges forwards. Even though they sympathize with Croc, the dynamic duo kick his ass anyway. Knocking him out, the warden limps towards Batman. He's like... Thank you, that monster deserves to be put down. And then Batman decks him. <laughs> and it's like, there's only one monster here. And then Dick is like, so... So when, when the dust cleared, um, Dick is like, so this is where you tell me to, you know, get lost. And Batman hesitates and he says, I'm... I'm proud of you, Dick. And Nightwing says, like, are you feeling okay? And Batman says, this is going to be the last time we meet. We can see the cogs already turning in Batman's head. No matter what he does, whether he stops Scarecrow or not tonight, the damage has already been done. He's not making it until dawn. Keep Bloodhaven safe. Promise me. But not Gotham. Once I'm gone, Gotham's fucked. Can't do two cities. Can't do two cities. Yeah, you've, set, you've established Bloodhaven, he knows Bloodhaven. Um, and Nightwing's like, oh, fine, I get it. And he grins, trying to keep things light. And he's like, you just don't want me hanging around, stealing the limelight. And Batman goes, no, dick. And Nightwing looks at him. I won't let you down. Two more old friends to see before we enter the endgame. <laughs> Mr. Freeze Yay. stands broken and crestfallen in the bowels of a cargo ship. An empty container sits in front of him. Yeah. A computer recording loops on the speakers and it says, Error, system failure, cryogenerator unstable. Victor, what, what happened here? Batman asks. They wanted me to join them, help fight you. I refused, so they took Nora. She'll die without my care. And then there's like a little switch kind of triggers in his brain when he thinks about this. And he goes, he aims his freeze ray at Batman. He says, but they said they will return her in exchange for you. If you trust them, Victor, take your shot. Freeze hesitates, lowers his weapon. He goes, find her, Batman, please. So that's exactly what we do. Batman uh, beats up some of the militia, but then he reaches Nora. It's too late. She's woken up from her, cryo state, from her cryo state. She tells us that all of these years, she has been aware of everything. Oh, God. It was like dreaming, she says, but she could always hear Victor talking to her. She knows what he's become. Victor calls us up in the comms, and Nora's like, let me speak to him. Nora, Freeze says, don't, don't be afraid. I, I will save you. As soon as you're back, I, I will freeze you again and... No, Nora says. I love you, but you need to stop, Victor. Don't you see? I don't want saving. Not anymore. But you're dying, Nora, Freeze says, and then the comms cut off. Across the city, we see a massive explosion in the Gotham Bay. Victor's cryostate generator has finally blown up. Batman races across the city with Nora in the car with him, and we see that the militia have beat us there. They're raining down fire on Freeze's lab and the cargo ship. Together... Batman and Freeze fight back the militia. We blow them up, Victor uses his Freeze Ray to hold them back, and when the snow settles, the ship lies in tatters. All of Freeze's equipment is gone. Without it, I can't save you, Victor says. Victor, this isn't you, Nora says. I, I, I won't let you destroy yourself like this anymore. I wish I could have told you sooner. I don't want you to die, Nora. Then let me live. Freeze turns off his lifeline, his suit. He decides if Nora's going to die, then he will too. We won't have much time, he says. Days? Nora takes his hand. She looks at him and she smiles and she says, Time has never been on our side, Victor. And Batman leaves them to enjoy their last days together, oh. somewhere far away from here. God. I love that. I love oh. that. Especially if you play the whole thing, you do Cold Cold Heart, you get him in Arkham City and you get this. It's so sad. Devastating. Uh, it's really, yeah. 
Um, yeah, I love that side quest. But you know what else I love? Riddles! Yeah. <laughs> Rizzler! Yeah. Is he in a Hawaiian shirt? He yes. is in a, yes, he's in a shirt with uh, question marks <laughs> on it. Uh, I'm going to say this straight up because I don't know if I will to deliver it properly. You can trace a degradation of the mind from Arkham Asylum right through to this point. Hell, even Arkham Origins right through to this point. The Riddler has cracked by the time we <laughs> find him at night. <laughs> he is way off the deep end. So uh, as Batman flies around, a familiar voice cascades over Gotham. And he's like, forget about Scarecrow, Batman. It's time to face your one true nemesis. And whenever he says it... <laughs> There's like little glitches underneath him, and th the way I describe it, is like it almost sounds like he's got minions echoing what he says. So it's like it's trying to face your one, two nemesis, nemesis, nemesis. We want two nemesis. It's like it it's always in the background. It's very good. Um, so screens crackle on, and we see Catwoman tied up, blindfolded, <laughs> with a bomb collar around. Oh yeah, her. what happened to her being important to this game? This is where she comes important for a side story. Yeah. So a bomb collar's around her neck, and he's like, "Riddle me this: Why would a Batman visit an abandoned orphanage?" Eddie, sweetie, Catwoman says, with she's got a blindfold on her. She's like, you confuse me with Robin. The big guy and I aren't that close. And Riddler's not listening. He's like, oh, oh, I know. It's clear again that he's absolutely lost it. He's a wreck. He's no longer the dapper bowler hat genius from Arkham Asylum. No longer even the Machiavellian saw trap killer from Arkham City. The years have not been kind to the Riddler. And he's like, it's because of what will happen to his feline friend if he doesn't get here in time. Why? What do you mean, why? What, like, like, he's gonna kill Catwoman because no, he wants Batman's attention. Not that part. Not that part. Why? Like, why is he going insane? Because he's had years of being <laughs> defeated by Batman. He's obsessed with him. Yeah. And last time they were together, he just beat the shit out of him, and he's presumably been held in brutal prison conditions. What? Yeah. Why not give up? Because he's not well. He's a super villain. Why not give up? <laughs> what the we didn't say that once during fucking Kingdom <laughs> Hearts. <laughs> 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 You know what, Xehanort, just give it a rest, okay? Xehanort kept beating him. It's hardly a, it's it's hardly a plot hole. Why doesn't the supervillain stop being a villain? I don't know. Like, Christ. So... <laughs> <laughs> so, because there wouldn't be any game. So, we go to the orphanage and we find Catwoman, right? Uh, and she's like, Batman, that better be you, and you better be sorry. And Batman's like, are you okay? And he starts untying her, and she goes, I'm perfect. What little girl doesn't dream of being bait for your strapping dark knight? I'm sorry, do I seem testy? It's probably got something to do with this gorgeous necklace that Eddie picked out for me. Have you seen it? It explodes. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> Joker uh, appears, of course, um, and he giggles. And again, I want to point out, you can do all of this without j the Joker. So you can do all of this. All of these little interactions that they wrote and animated for and had voice acted, some players won't get this if you just do the Riddler story all the way through. Um, and he points somebody and goes, Hey, Bat, when did Catwoman get so cute? Must have been when I was starting to look out of your eyes. You gonna ask her out or what? Oh, don't tell me. You're still torn up about Talia Al Ghul. Come on! It's been months. Take it from your wingman, Brucey. And the ladies hate it when you brood over the ex you failed to save. <laughs> and besides, good news. I was just hanging out in hell, you know, because you killed me and sent me there. <laughs> and Talia was there. She started crying, so I went to comfort her. And before I knew it, one thing led to another. And, you know, Talia and I just want you to be happy, Bruce. Because when I take over your body and lock you away in a tiny little corner of your mind, I'll kill the cat first. So, uh, yeah. Riddler then pops up on a screen. And he's like, ah, both contestants are finally here. Welcome to my Riddletorium. Tonight, folks, we've got riddles galore. Do you have a photographic memory, Dark Knight? Because I do. I can summon your sneering features at will. That is, when they don't burst unbidden into my brain. I have perfect recall, too. I can remember every time you hurt me. Sometimes... I wake up to the feel of your hands around my neck. Your carbon fiber fists smashing into my solar plexus. How dare you brutalize me! Me, the Riddler, the world's greatest everything! Well, tonight will be your end. So Eddie has a bunch of Riddler trophies, games, bloody races. We, he has Batmobile yeah. races we have to do. They're, they're honestly, some of them some of them are like Mario Kart tracks, like yeah. looping under the city. Like. Does he have the, Rid the Riddler mobile? 
Uh, he doesn't know. Although if you do them all, you unlock a skin for the Batmobile, which is uh, green question marks. It's very good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we have to do all of that. And for every group of collectibles we get, he gives us a key to Catwoman's bomb collar. There's nine in total. Eventually, nine we lives. Nine, nine lives. lives. Yeah. So yeah. Oh yeah. Shit. Sorry. I just realized that. How is yeah. it taking me this long? So eventually, we get the bomb collar off of Catwoman, and Riddler throws the mother of all tantrums. <laughs> he bursts into the orphanage. In a goddamn mech suit. <laughs> and as he comes in, he's like, You cheater, you fraud, you chancing, bumbling amateur. Look what you've reduced me to, Batman. If you cannot simply bow down to my obvious intelligence, then I'll stoop to your pathetic level and make you. So hi, diddle diddle, answer this riddle. And a giant mechanized hand comes crashing down. <laughs> Batman dodges it, and the boss fight begins. And uh, you don't get to experience the boss fight, but it's very cool. Batman and Catwoman fighting together. Um, and uh, your boss fight is actually one last riddle. Ah, <laughs> riddle me this! What is Batman's secret identity? Fuck. Come on. I've been teasing you the whole time. Dick Grayson. Oh, no, 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 you've no, got no. this. Oh, shit. You've got this. Um, um. Oh, who's the other one? <laughs> uh, Alfred. It's Bruce Wayne! What? Oh. No! <laughs> well done! Uh, so, Batman and Catwoman work I... together. I'm I'm so shook right now. <laughs> I need you to remember this because it becomes important later. Bruce Wayne, Batman. So Batman and Catwoman. The Thomas the Thomas Elliot stuff just confused us. <laughs> Wayne Bruce Man, Batman. Yeah. So Batman and Catwoman, they they beat up Eddie. It's all good. It's honestly not a bad fight. It's quite cathartic after four games to finally actually get to kick his ass. Uh, and when it's all done, Catwoman's like, "Ah, oh, that's better." And she gets the bomb collar off. It's like. How should we celebrate? But then again, replaces I, it with her own collar. Yeah, well, pretty much, yeah. So she's like, how should we celebrate? Oh, I've know some museums we could start robbing. Or, then again, I do also know a couple of hotels. And she legitimately leans in for a kiss. And Batman takes a moment, and then he eases away from her. She goes in to swipe him with her claws. Again, this is how they flirt. And Batman catches her hand with ease, and he goes, play nice. Her face flashes with concern, and she says... You're not playing at all. No, I'm not. Not anymore. Well, what's that supposed to mean? It means this is the end, Selina. It means we can't... I can't... I will see you again, right? No one will. Gotham needs something more, something worse to defend her. She needs a new myth, a legend more powerful than I can be right now. A legend that can only rise from the ashes of the Batman. There are some things you can't do alone. They kiss. For a second, Batman gets lost in the moment. He holds her close and then pushes her away. And some things you have to. He starts to leave. Oh, call if you need me. I won't. I know, <laughs> Selina says. I just wanted to say it. Oh, and as a quick fun aside, when we take Riddler back to the GCPD lockup, uh, Joker pops up and giggles as we throw Eddie into the cell. It's like, good for you, Bats! Eddie doesn't need psychiatric help! No, no, no! Beat him up, lock him up! That's the best medicine! Which we... I really like. <laughs> and this game will never, never address another way to do it. <laughs> yeah, legit. Do we really put games. them all into the same cell? Mm -hmm. That seems like a horrible idea. I told you at the start, they all start bickering. You can with literally each other. see Asriel in the back there as well. <laughs> it's great. Um, Deacon Blackfire, I think, at one point tries to recruit Asriel, and Asriel's basically like, I'm done with cults. You know, it's, it's great. So, um, yeah, part seven, the end game, last part. Batman's. So, oh, I'm just going to point out to this now, right? Poison Ivy dead. Um, if we go back in the end game, there is a little flower where her body was and her body is gone. Aww. Oh, maybe Poison Ivy alive? Who knows? Or maybe just a plant grew where she was. Uh, but regardless, that's that's all we get there. So Batman's search for the Arkham Knight and Scarecrow is jostled along by Jim Gordon. He calls into the GCPD and we intercept his communications. He's not speaking to Batman, he's speaking to like the guy on the radio. And it is, it's, a, it's not actually like this, but it very much was like, uh, tell Batman that I found yeah. Crane. <laughs> <laughs> tell Batman I'm still not talking to him. Like, can you tell Gordon I'm sorry? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Um, so I'm, I found Crane, he tells his colleagues. That bass is gonna die for what he did to my little girl. We trace his signal to an abandoned shopping mall, fight through some goons, get into a boss fight with the Arkham Knight in a massive drill, and find that Jim Gordon has, surprise, surprise, been captured. We go to untie him, and the Arkham Knight appears, pointing a gun at us. You really have no idea who I am, do you, Bruce? He opens the front of his helmet to reveal 
Jason Todd. Yay! Oh, all right. Well done, ah, Jason. Well done. You got one. Well done. Well done. To be fair, I feel like they wouldn't have redone all of that if not for uh, he's still alive last kick in the balls. I like this a lot. Yeah, what I will cool. say is that it is the twist that surprised pretty much so nobody. Any, Were any, you writhing in your seat so a bit over, the, over there when soon, I said it? As soon as ev <laughs> as soon as the first trailer dropped, yeah. they said Arkham Knight's a brand new character and anyone who had ever read a Batman comic went, it's probably Jason Todd. Yeah. Uh, Jason Todd comes back. Okay, I can now tell you, the ba Batman comic I'm going to lend you is called Under the Red Hood. In the comics, Jason Todd is, doesn't do Arkham Knight, he becomes the Red Hood. Which is a vigilante who goes up against Batman. Sometimes. I thought that was the cult that the Joker was Yes, in. that's the namesake. It's why he names himself the Red Hood. It's almost like I'm taking the moniker of the monster that killed me brought, and I got brought back to life. He goes back to life through Lazarus pitch shenanigans. Um, and, the whole thing. and the Red Hood, Jason Todd, is a very violent. He kills, he uses guns. He represents Batman's vengeance. I see. Um, this is why he's my favourite Robin. Red Hood is my favourite, not necessarily Jason Todd's Robin. I feel like I... Now that you say all that, I feel like I'm getting, like, glimpses of... I feel like I knew that there was a Robin called Red Hood. Yeah. Granted, I don't think I knew he was a villain. Anyway, we won't say anything more yeah, about we'll, him we'll for now. Yeah. We're still going, we're still going. So, um, so Batman gasps, he's like, Jason, but you're dead. And then Joker slides into shots, and he goes, Well, let's not fall out here, Bats. I mean, I might have told you a teeny tiny little lie, but come on, look at the boy. You did good. We did good. You should be proud. So again, it's almost like the villain of Arkham Knight is this combination of Batman and Joker. This whole story is a Batman, as in all four games, when you look at it, it's a Batman-Joker story. It all comes, this is the the the, 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 the child they're, of they're, Batman they're, and Joker. Yeah. They're his parents. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, right? Yeah, it's fucked. So, it's like, you should be proud. And Jason's like, what's the matter? T Troy Baker voicing him. What's the matter? Lost for words? Oh, I expected more. I'm hurt. Joker sent me the film. I, I saw him kill you. Jason explodes at that. It's like, don't you dare lie to me! How long did you wait before replacing me? A month? A week? I trusted you, and you just left me to die! That's, that's not what happened. You always told me, Bruce, focus on what I want to achieve, and it'll happen. Well, you know what I'm focused on now? You, dead. Stand down, Robin, Batman barks desperately, hoping to appeal to the little boy he once knew. Don't call me that, Jason shrieks. That's not my name. I don't know why he ever thought that was going to work. It's something. You are Robin. You're Jason. You're not what he made you. And then the two fight. You are Robin. Meanwhile, the, the, Tim is off in the corner like, oh. <laughs> Tim's locked in a cell crying about Barbara right Yeah, now. that's exactly where he is right oh, now, yeah. yeah. So the two fight... Doesn't even know that his moniker's been stolen. <laughs> yeah. So the two fight, boss battle. Uh, during the battle, Jason removes the Arkham Knight helmet with the point ears and replaces it with a red helmet. Red hood. Uh, um, people kind of hate that. Um, I think it's as I remember, he doesn't quite remove it so much as it's part of it gets knocked away and this is what it... It transforms underneath. it almost yeah. into it. It does a little mechanized... And then changes into this. Uh, it's it's an it's Easter egg. Not, is it red? It's red. It's like a light, a red light underneath it. Uh, oh, Neil, Neil mentioned earlier the holograms are all like moving around. They used to be blue, now they're red. I see. So there you go. He's got a red helmet. Um, so we beat him back. But when the boss fight concludes, Batman pins Jason to the floor, fist raised, and he sees a scared, angry boy looking back at him from beneath the mask. He hesitates, saying the two words that Jason never expected to hear. I'm sorry, he says. You left me to rot in that abandoned wing of Arkham for over a year with him! It's not too late, Batman says. A beat. And then he reaches out his hand. Jason doesn't take it. He just drops his gun and leans back crying. Batman turns away, calls Alfred, explains what's happened, and when he turns back, Jason is gone. Well, Joker says, I guess that's the end of the Arkham Knight. He chose the name himself, you know, bless him. <laughs> We're better to drive a man crazy than the madhouse. Bats unties Jim Gordon, and the two of them head up to the roof of the building. Jim tells us that Scarecrow's up there. Jim, I'm, I'm sorry about Barbara. Don't. Let's just get this over with. Jim, Batman presses. I just want to say, working with Barbara, it was an honour. A beat, and then Jim says, Stubborn, like her old man. You know, you see a lot in this job, a lot of pain, suffering. And then he looks at Batman and he goes, he goes, But I'll never forget taking a witness statement from an eight-year-old boy who'd just seen his parents gunned down. I was thinking, I may never get a chance to tell you this, but 
I'm sorry. We're the same, Bruce. We do anything for our family. Mm. So he's known. He's known this whole time. Scarecrow. I feel like Batman doesn't actually care that much about keeping the identity. Tonight, he definitely doesn't. It, it, it feels like in general, he's always like, oh, I'm going to hide it. But like, if you find out, it's whatever. I mean, this is the, this is, yeah. This is the last arc in Batman story. Scarecrow waits on the rooftop of the building. So, you did it, he muses. It's like, I have my doubts that you could make this happen. On your knees, Crane, Batman growls. I'm not talking to you. He looks at Gordon. It's time. Jim Gordon points his gun at Batman. Oh, for fuck's sake. I'm sorry, he says. It was the only way. He spits at Scarecrow and he says, Get me my daughter. She's a, dead. A soldier wheels out Barbara. What? Was it fear gas the whole time? Fear gas the whole time. <laughs> yeah, you thought you called one of the twists. This is the second twist. We twisty twisted. <laughs> so yes. A soldier wheels out Barbara. She looks at the scene in front of her. Scarecrow, Batman, her dad pointing the gun. And she's like, what? What is this? Dad, what are you doing? Scarecrow steps behind Barbara and starts to wheel her to the edge of the rooftop. Jim switches his gun and points it at Scarecrow. He goes, what are you doing? Don't touch her. And then Scarecrow says, now, this is where the fun begins. Think carefully about your next move, Commissioner. Your daughter's life depends on it. Jim's face twists in anguish and confusion. He knows what Scarecrow is asking of him. In the blink of an eye, he turns and shoots Batman. Oracle screams and Scarecrow's men grab him. What have you done, Scarecrow roars? Did you think I wanted him dead? Did you think that would save your daughter? Well, now comes your punishment. He tips Oracle's chair. Wait, then chair. what the fuck did he want? Don't know. I honestly don't know. He tips Oracle's chair so she's dangling off of the roof. She glares at him and she says, You don't scare me. Shh, Scarecrow whispers. It's okay to be afraid. And he lets go. Oracle tumbles and spins through the air. And then whoosh, Batman grabs her, glides to the bottom, saves her. I thought you were dead. We see that Jim shot him in the bat symbol. Like the Arkham Knight said, yeah. it's where his armor's the strongest. A lot happens over the course of the next hour of gameplay. Bruce gets Barbara back to the GCPD where she'll be safe. Scarecrow goes to the Panessa Movie Studios where we locked away Robin and kidnaps him. He now has two hostages, Tim and Jim Gordon. Babs and Bats have a whole section where they work together to destroy some militia tanks. Wait, why has he now captured Jim Gordon? I feel like Jim Gordon isn't going to do anything else. It's just taking another hostage, someone that Batman cares about. Um, so yeah, takes him. Oh, oh, excuse me, excuse me. I thought you said that Batman no, no. took him. No, no, no. Scarecrow now has Tim and Jim. Okay, that makes more sense. Batman and Barbara have a whole section where Wait. they work together. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is the stuff that doesn't matter. When, when did he get Tim? I thought Tim was locked up here. He just he, said he went exactly, to Panessa. He came to the Panessa Studios. He just Studios. said that. Oh, I thought Batman went to the Panessa Studios. He came to the Panessa Studios and took him. He's I there. I thought you said Batman did that. No, Scarecrow. Okay. Scarecrow has two hostages, Tim and Jim. I understand now. We Thank fight, you. We fight some tanks with Oracle. Who gives a fuck? I appreciate your explanation. And eventually, when all is said and done, Scarecrow tells Batman where to meet him and he's like, I'm going to kill the hostages unless you come. So we go to the rendezvous point. Scarecrow tells us to get in the back of a truck or he will kill both hostages. And we do as we are told for the end game. In the back of the truck, Alfred calls us on the comms and he's like, Sir, I'm detecting someone tracking your movements throughout the city. And Batman is like, I knew that he would. Gas fills the back of the truck and it explodes, throwing Batman out the back. It's that fated place where the Batman was born. Crime the, the Alley. Criminally. The criminally. The criminally. The corpses of Thomas and Martha Wayne lie bleeding in the streets. Batman kneels by them. Joker appears. Such a happy couple, he leers. Shame about the kid, though. Poor little Brucey never quite got over it, now did he? He kicks Batman in the side of the head. It's time to move on, kiddo. Take a load off. Join your parents. Uncle Jay will take it from here. <laughs> a horde of jokers move in. We fight them off one by one, but as the fight goes on, Batman's moves become more brutal. He stops knocking out the jokers. He starts snapping necks, breaking bats. Breaking backs. And suddenly, not bats, and suddenly we're back in the van, breathing heavily. Oh, there we go. That mind is mine. It's over, Bruce. You snapped, and now Scarecrow is going to set me free. <laughs> and then we finally see where we're going. Any guesses? Arkham Asylum. Arkham Asylum. Yeah, I gotta bring it all back home. 
Scarecrow wheels Batman into Arkham Mansion on a standing gurney. We see Jim and Robin held hostage. A camera is fixed on Batman's face. Oh, that? Scarecrow looks at the camera. Well, I don't care who you are, but they will. We see news reporters flashing up on televisions around the room. Scarecrow is broadcasting directly to them. Everyone is watching this, including who? Vicky the Vale. One reporter. The number one reporter in Gotham, Vicky Vale. Yeah, she's reporting on it. Uh, he tips them off that he's going to reveal this. So, I'm going to rob them of hope, Scarecrow says. As they stare into your eyes, they will blame you. Failure will have a face and a name. He pulls out a gun, shoots Robin in the stomach, and points it at Jim. Mr. Gordon, the mask, if you'd do the honours. It's okay, Jim, Batman says softly. No, Jim shouts. It's not. You know what this means. It means it's the end, Batman says. Jim hesitates, and live on camera, he removes the mask. And we finally learn... The Batman's true identity is Bruce Wayne. Who the fuck is that? Why did you pick the worst? Who is that? The worst. Bruce Wayne. No, it's not. It's Bruce Wayne and Batman. That, who, who is this? This is Gotham. It's Bruce Wayne and Batman. He looks like he's a parody. <sighs> Look, Chase, I'm not messing around. Look. <laughs> Parents shot in Crime Alley. Lots of crime in Crime Alley. That's Cri why it's called... I, I'm not, I'm not crime, crime Alley. Crime Alley. Crimely? Parents shot. Bruce Wayne mad about that. Travels world to get over it. Still mad when comes back. He's, he's still mad, but he's got money. And, and then he turns into a bat, all right? It's, it's really easy to understand. All right, parents shot in Crime Alley. Lots of crime there. Bruce Wayne mad about that. Travels the world to get over it. Still mad, comes home. Still mad, got money, but turns into a bat. You get it? Did he not have money before? Look. Why does he only get money after he crashes? <laughs> a bat, he's mad about his parents dying, and one night he's sitting there, and then a bat crashes through the glass, and he sees the bat, and he gets scared, and he says, Yes, father, I shall become a bat. <laughs> <laughs> then he becomes Batman. And then he takes a little bell, and he goes, Ding, 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 wrong. Alfred, I'm a vampire now. Pretty much, yeah. Oh, nice. I'm so glad. It took us ages. Finally got it. We finally got, got there. there. Finally got it. Batman is a vampire. That Batman's has happened. That's true identity. <laughs> Um, when Scarecrow sees who this is and he learns that Batman is Bruce Wayne, his face twists in surprise. And he's like, Wayne, now the world can see you for what you truly are. A legend laid bare, powerless, human, and afraid. He injects the fear toxin straight into Bruce's neck with the, these needle fingers. Uh, Bruce shudders and we flash to playing as the Joker in the GCPD. It's a rampage. It's a third-person shooter. Joker goes on a killing spree, and we control him this whole time. He kills Penguin, Croc, Two-Face, Riddler, every one of their henchmen, every cop who gets in his way, Jim Gordon, Aaron Cash, Robin, everybody. He's laughing the whole time. He even gets his own Joker-mobile. Ah! I caught it. <laughs> it's got a big, wide grin carved into the metal. That's so good. It's gonna bite you. So much more fun with my hands on the controls, he laughs. He steps out to the GCPD and we see that Gotham is burning. He claps his hands and he goes, This may be my finest work yet. Alfred's voice radios into Joker's ear and he goes, Please listen to me, sir. Sir, Bruce, after all you've done, think about what you're doing. I'm begging you, stop this rampage. Oh, Alfred, sweet, loyal Alfred. Brucey is gone. But don't you worry, your new master's coming home soon. We flash back to the real world of Arkham Asylum, leaving Joker's dream of the future. Batman is gone. Now there's only Joker. Scarecrow's laughing and leering and lecturing about how he's won, how the Batman is finished, and he goes, Soon Gotham will be ashes. Good, Joker says. And Scarecrow flinched and goes, What? Back to playing as Joker. In the dream. The burning Gotham turns to night, <laughs> and suddenly it's a first-person shooter. He wanders the halls of Arkham Asylum, a torch lighting the way, but something has changed. He sees a painting of Batman at the end of Arkham, Arkham City, solemnly holding Joker's body in his hand, which looks like what painting? Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel, yeah. The crematorium. He watches as his own body is burned alive, and he's like, Are you trying to tell me something, Bats? I've never felt so alive! Joker's grave is small, overgrown, abandoned. They gave him a statue? Well, this is all in his mind, remember. This is Joker's dream, but Batman's fighting back. It's, it's a mental battle. You said small, 
but it is a statue in the middle of a massive stone-carved mausoleum. Yeah, but it's shit. Um, I mean, the head falls off. The jokes start to falter when Joker sees this. And he goes, oh, I get it. They forgot about me. Well, very funny, Bats, but that's not going to happen now. Statues of Batman appear and disappear at a glance. It's like, it's like the Weeping Angels from Doctor Who, so yeah. when you turn around, they're suddenly behind you. It's very cool. It's very creepy, this. They build up. This This feels quite scary, because it's first-person shooter and stuff. You're playing as the Joker. It's like he's haunting the dreamscape the Joker's lost in. He's coming back through. We see Harley Quinn at Joker's funeral. She's the only person here. Nobody came. Nobody cared to. And, and he's like, Harley, what is this? You know, did you forget to send the invitations? Um, we see a newspaper with the headline. This is my favorite. Joker dies. Gotham doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you can't see it very well here, but there's a little column stating that Harley Quinn is pregnant with Riddler's baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, I see what you're trying to do, Bats. You don't scare me. And then the statues return more and more. For every one that Joker shoots, ten take its place until finally... Batman breaks through. He grabs Joker by the throat and hoists him into the air. And Joker's like, ha! For a second there, I was starting to get a little scared. But come on, Bats. It's me. What have I got to be afraid of? And then Batman proves why he's the world's greatest detective. He always knew what made Joker tick. You're afraid of being ashes. You're afraid of being forgotten. And you will be forgotten, Joker, because of me. And he leans in saying the iconic line, I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman. He yeah. nut yes! He nuts Joker, throws him into an Arkham cell. Bats wait! He shrieks as Batman shuts the door. Sincere real fear bleeds off of him. Please, no, please! Bruce, don't leave me! Bruce, Bruce, please! Until finally, all he can croak out is, I need you! And it moves off into the darkness. Gone. Joker defeated through pure fucking well, will. Uh, I love it. Back to the real world. The green fades from Batman's eyes. He's beaten the clown back once and for all. Scarecrow is still monologuing. He's like, no savior, no more hope, no more Batman. He stabs Bruce again with the fear toxin, but this time it doesn't, willpower. It doesn't work. Willpower. I'm not afraid, Crane. And for the first time the whole game, Scarecrow's face legitimately twists with fear. Impossible, he hisses. He pulls out a gun and just places it to Bruce's head. Without fear, life is meaningless. Bang. A bullet whizzes in from far away, blowing the pistol out of Scarecrow's hand. Another gunshot, freeing Batman of his restraints. The camera pans up and we see... Harley Quinn! Jason Todd. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I thought it was going to have a final moment of, like, Harley coming back and being like, For my pudding! <laughs> I feel like the Harley story gone. But yeah, Jason Todd, Red Hood, he's back. And he's got a sort of bat symbol drawn on his chest now. <laughs> he does. Oh, so he does. Yeah, he got like a marker pen and just kind of like... Yeah, yeah. On on, on the, in the lift. <laughs> uh, he doesn't say a word. He came here to do one thing. With that complete, he doesn't hang around. Scarecrow jabs out one more time with his fear toxin, but Bruce grabs it, twists his arm, and injects the toxin into Scarecrow. What's wrong? He rumbles. Scared? Scarecrow collapses to the floor, and we see what he sees. Bats. A vicious, deadly swarm of bats, and in the middle of them, the Batman. He collapses, and Jim approaches. Look after them, Jim, Bruce says. Look after them all. You've been a good friend, the best I could have asked for. You were there at the beginning, and now you get to see how it ends. Batman flies out of Arkham back to Wayne Manor, where Alfred is waiting. And so are hundreds of Gothamites and reporters. We see the bat signal shatter from a remote device. He won't be needing it anymore. We hear Jim Gordon usher his men back out into the city to take it back from the criminals. Just a quick thing, just to point out, the only way to achieve this true ending, what you're about to see, is if you 100% complete the game. I don't think... I think you have to get most of the criminals. I think you have to get a set number of criminals to get the Nightfall Protocol. Including Riddler. Including Riddler, yeah. Which means you have to get every Riddler trophy, every riddle, <laughs> you have to do every race, yeah. every criminal needs to be locked away for the Nightfall Protocol to be activated this end. I love it. Yeah, people didn't like that. Uh, I think it's kind of crap. Um, I think you should be able to unlock it anyway, but I don't mind. Because uh, again, the whole point is here is that before Batman retires, he, he does it all in one night. He proves why he's the Batman. He locks so, every criminal up. He solves oh. every riddle. Saves the day. So, 
yeah, he goes to Alfred, and Alfred's like, you know, are you sure about this? Uh, are you sure you want to do this, sir? Alfred asks as he opens the front door for Bruce. I've got to. The nightfall protocol is the only way to protect them. He walks inside. A few moments pass, and Wayne Manor explodes as we hear Jim Gordon. This is how it happened, he says quietly. This is how the Batman died. One year later, and our epilogue shows us a few things. The first is that Jim Gordon has been elected mayor of Gotham. Oh, he gets an that's nice. And does yeah, yeah, and again, tie-in comic stuff. Uh, this is because Bruce Wayne and Barbara, they both convince him. He's like, I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it. It's like, you're literally the best thing. You need to be mayor, the current mayor's shit. Um, so yeah, so he gets in a taxi, and as he does, he gets a text from Tim Drake Robin. Don't forget the ring. Tonight, Tim and Barbara are getting married. Cute. Did, did he know Tim Drake was Robin, or did he just think it's somebody named Tim Drake? I, to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised. I actually don't know, uh, but I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if after all this, Robin just tells him. Yeah. Fair you enough. know? Uh, so through challenge maps and DLC, we get a little, like, kind of where are they now for some of the Bat family. So uh, Robin's challenge map tells us that Tim and Barbara have a lovely honeymoon, wedding goes really well, uh, but they eventually return to Gotham and keep fighting the good fight. Babs becomes Tim's woman in the chair, and we get to experience him kicking Harvey Two-Face's ass. Hooray! Yeah. Nightwing learns that Penguin's men are planning to break their boss out of jail, but he manages to stop them. Hooray. Uh, Jason Todd dons the mantle of the Red Hood. He operates outside of the wider Bat family. He still kills, he still uses guns, but he's focused on Gotham's criminal underbelly, and this is very like the comics. So is, is, is he like an anti-hero? Kind he's of? an anti-hero, yeah. yeah. We play through his rampage as he tries to take down Roman Sionis, aka Black Mask. Please, Black Mask begs, I'll, I'll leave Gotham forever, I'll give you anything you want, I'll go anywhere. Red Hood leans in, he goes, how about you go to hell? And he kicks Black Mask out of the window and watches as he falls to his death. Oh. Say hi to Joker for me, he mutters, before walking into the night. Uh, so Black Mask now dead in this universe as well. Um, and the final thing is a young couple leaving the cinema with their son. They're set upon by two muggers, as we hear Jim thinking to himself, Who will protect Gotham now that the Batman is dead? Help me, the woman screams. No one's coming, lady, one of the muggers growl, and as he grabs the pearl necklace from her, there's a rustle from behind. The muggers turn and look at something up above. <laughs> hey, freak, they shout. Maybe you missed the news. Batman's dead. That look don't scare us no more. And then we see what they see. A figure, shrouded in darkness, slowly rising into the air. What the hell, the muggers mutter. And then bang. The figure swoops down in an orange blaze of fire and smoke. Bats burst off of it. The muggers scream and scream. We cut to black and the credits roll. There and that's us. No are, post credits. Are we going to take that as the Batman is still operating? Just in a different way. There's... How do you read that, Chase? Well, I will say that this ending has been soured. Why? Because of Suicide Squad. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's... So we know that after this, he goes and joins the Justice League. So he's obviously still operating. <laughs> yes, it is. And I completely agree with you. Yes. Yeah. If we, it if sours we, my interpretation. We had we had the benefit of eight years of, of people theorizing about this ending uh with without knowledge of this new suicide squad premise yeah um i always took this as it's just a kind of representation for the legacy of the bat yeah. you know like the 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 fear is the legacy that will always be there i can um, see that if you have like two kind of other bat people already yeah. operating in gotham yeah if you ignore Suicide Squad, um, there's there's readings of this which are like maybe maybe it's Azrael finally becoming Batman. Maybe it's Nightwing. Yeah, exa exactly. I think that's a that's a dumb. that's a really shit one. Maybe it's Nightwing. Maybe it's Robin just d donning the cowl. Um, oops. <laughs> maybe maybe it's um, the way. Maybe it's Batman legitimately using Scarecrow's fear gas. I oh. I hate that. I also would hate that. Um, I like this just being symbolic. It's just Batman is out and about. Maybe, maybe he's learned some new tricks, but this is exactly what Neil said. This is what the criminals see when Batman preys on them. Um, he said to Selina, he was like, Gotham needs something bigger, something worse. And maybe he's killed Bruce Wayne. And now maybe he's just a little bit more vengeful, a little bit more savage. Who knows? Um, we don't know. Never answered. Until Suicide Squad, presumably. But then the thing is about Suicide Squad is it's got the veil over it, which is that Batman's brainwashed by the baddie, Bra Brainiac. So anything bad he does in that game is like, ah, oh, yeah, he was brainwashed by Brainiac. I mean, that's fine. It's it's less that and more the fact that if he, if the Justice League is a thing canonically after the events of this game, yeah. then 
Mm-hmm. Things just kind of went back to normal. Yeah. Well, the, the beauty of this is this episode is going to go out, give or take, around 1st of April. Um, and by that point, Suicide Squad will have been out for a while. Oh. Um, yeah. So what, people what will be... We don't know. Uh, a couple of days. Oh. Uh, yeah. So right now, we don't know. And there's going to be comments being like, lol. Or, oh, they really like the, the way they treated Batman in that game sucked. Or people will be like, I really loved what they did with Batman. Yeah. It could be anything. Do you want Do you want to ever cover Suicide Squad as a one-off if it's good? Depends. <laughs> it, 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 it really depends. Because it depends on like... Everything always comes down to this will be fun for lore dump. If I play it and it's boring, I'm like, ah. I think, th- don't be surprised if I cover it as a one-off maybe next year, maybe the year after. I have a strong... Um, it's a live service, so I'm going to wait for that story to expand. Yes. Um, yeah, I have a feeling that if nothing else, the the writing might be okay in that game. You know, this, or the story and characters, rather, will be will be okay. Chase, end of the, end of the franchise so, thus far, I'm keen to hear your thoughts. We I really up. liked it. I, I really, I, especially this one. This one was very good. Yeah, I liked it. This one was very good. Yeah. Some people think this is the worst story. I really they're like the, <laughs> behemothly wrong. It's the best of the three. I, I have at cut least, out. I, I've cut out a lot of busy work from this. I have. I have no clue how this from a gameplay perspective, but at least hearing the story explained. Is, this is the best story by miles. It's not even close. Oh, I think Origins is my favorite still, I but think, I really like this. I think City has the worst story because City's just very vignette and it's very scattered. Yeah. And granted, so is this one to a degree, but I feel like it's much more cohesive. There's more to it. I'd say this one, Origins, Asylum City. I think I yeah. seeing them all over the course of a weekend, obviously all of these games, um, I think that, yeah, Batman kind of changes and sort of by the end of this one, it's not really hammered home a lot, but he does he does learn to rely on people again. Yeah. Um, However, uh, they kind of take that choice out of his hands, I suppose. It's not like he even asked for help. No, um, no. But it is jarring, and I've made this point throughout, that, like, at no point do we ever have, like, with the exception of Jason, but Jason's more of a victim, do we have one of the supervillains, uh, anyone with kind of honest intentions tries to rehabilitate them, or we see any meaningful alternative no. to, to the, the Arkham system. No. Um, which is kind of frustrating, because that feels like the lesson that after the first game in this series that Bruce should be learning, is yep. that, oh shit, wow, this really didn't work. But To give kind of Rocksteady the, the benefit of the doubt with this, because Rock said his whole thing from day dot was we're going to give you an authentic Batman experience. And the the Bruce Wayne who rehabilitates people is a, a relatively new introduction in the comics. Like when they were making Asylum, for example, that stuff wasn't really about. And Does he? Does he currently in the comics? Sometimes he does. He, he's, he's, his focus is always on that people can people can be better than what they are. He, mm-hmm. oh, he believes that to his core. Um, it's, it's, it's a core aspect of who he is. But the way he... He's, he's putting out fires without ever stopping the source of the fire. It's the usual Batman shtick. You know, it's, it's why he exists. That is his reason for existing, is Gotham is a hellhole. And if Gotham stops being a hellhole, and if he fixes that, then there's nothing really to save. That's kind of, the, the, the I think, the thought process behind it. I, I think it's still an absolutely valid criticism of the story. I don't think that yeah. defends the story. But I think that it, ma- and it makes sense why they did it this way. Um, I'm not saying it's not an excellent series of games because obviously it yeah, is and I will be downloading Night when I go home yeah. this evening So, and is it fair to say that you're going to leave today and read some comics I did download the DC Unlimited app uh, in, in our lunch break wow. um, if this gets you into superheroes remember, chase oh, it, almost, shit. it almost certainly won't as a general concept <laughs> but it could potentially I will, I will give some Batman comics a read but I doubt that it will get me into superheroes as a general concept because I hate. Do you want to give a little uh, a little tease for our next series of games? What are we covering? Suki de suki suki te dore da ke tsuyoi yo sake de mo. I don't remember that being in Spider Man. <laughs> it's Yakuza. What? We're, We're doing, doing Yakuza. Yakuza. Oh no! 